Welcome back to ShiftCast. This is episode 22. I am back in action. I am back with a new haircut. Do- it's all gone, who are guys. You? What the heck? Yeah, I was going to say, what do you mean you're Shift back? Who, who is this? <laughs> Lando, who, do we, who did me, you bring me. for us? I promise. Look. You look spectacular, brother. It's still me. Oh, it is Hootie. It's look still at me. that mustache. <laughs> you look spectacular. Listen. And it was, um, I've, been growing, I've been growing the hair for nearly a decade. Um, wow. and I, I initially wanted to grow for donations and I've donated a couple of times now and it was just, you know, it's getting to a point where like I started to resent it. I was starting to get angry at the hair all the time. It was so annoying. You know, you, you'd like lay on it or like the shower mm-hmm. is extra long and dude, I, I was telling people, you gotta, if you want to take care of it and it's, and it looks healthy, you can't wash every day, but you do need to condition. Right. And then you, like, there's all these different rules and things. And so you kind of have to start building your life around this like hair and taking care of it. And it was just too obnoxious so it was time for a change it was time for something new so we went with kind of a mullet vibe yeah you look wow. you look spectacular and then the rat tail on the other side i mean rat tail come on so now do, we gotta do something a little silly with it w aura bro you can use the w force aura. now right that's right that's the anakin look is this a no star wars is the <laughs> lando can you get me a pose yes this is good <laughs> mine, dude. um well i want to also say welcome back Again, Tudy, for missing Thank last you. week. Uh, I watched it running, all back. It was a lovely episode with Valer. Mm. Yeah, duck in the smoke. It's whatever. I was right. You're wrong. It's cool. <laughs> oh, um, hold, on. hold on. About what? Shout out to the coin for screwing us. We had we predicted the correct final and we flipped a coin because someone's a fence sitter, even though I knew in their heart of hearts they wanted to pick an A. <laughs> no, if I, um, I did not want to, if the coin could have saved us, I wanted to go Falcons. Um, but listen, uh, I obviously spent. Uh, last week, yapping, yapping the audience's ear off about my thoughts and Belair's thoughts. Thank you again to Belair for coming on. Just a, a pleasure. Your thoughts um, on the NBA, that is. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. <laughs> I had the time of my life <laughs> talking about the NBA, finally with another ball knower. But I want to give you guys the floor uh, about your perspective of the major because your perspective of the major, I had the same perspective of the major as most people. I was watching it via twitch.tv slash Rocket League or the YouTube stream. Um but you guys were both there and in very different capacities. Jens was there as a media member, as he was in Copenhagen, and Hootie was running the team stream for Oxygen, uh, who had, you know, the most content run uh, you could have had without actually qualifying. So we'll go around, Tough. and um, we'll, we'll, I want to hear from you guys about your experiences, uh, you know, given your perspective. So, Jens, um, first of all, you've been to a London land before. That's and right. You went as a fan. So what's the, right. what was the difference yeah. like being in the copper box? Being that, it's it's being, an entire know. world of difference. I mean, uh, this time I actually spent some time actually seeing London, doing some <laughs> sightseeing, being a tourist for a little bit. Because two years ago I was there for the first time. I wasn't in London for uh, London 1.0 at uh, season five finals. Unfortunately, I had exams mm. with the This Is Rocket League moment. I was not there, but I was there two years ago. Um, for the spring major, wasn't it? Is hold on, hold on. Question, question. Is Jens yeah. Falcons good luck charm? <laughs> I guess He's been so. Two only, London only majors to a certain level, final. though. Yeah, it gets you there. Okay, you got to win one series. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's something, but I mean, I'm already happy that we got the finals, right? Yeah, yeah. That we predicted that. I mean, that's out of all the contenders there were. I mean, yes, BDS in. On the days were quite disappointing, but they came in looking really, really good. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's so different to experience it as a fan, which I really recommend. I mean, everyone says it, but honestly, two years ago was already, I don't know, I think it was my fourth or fifth land that I attended. Um, I'm lucky to live somewhere in Europe where you can just catch uh, a train or a plane to places. Uh, I mean, sometimes the, the planes are cheaper than the trains, which is really annoying. Like moving to Rotterdam by train is more expensive than flying to Madrid, even though I live in Belgium, which is like an hour away from Rotterdam. Oh. It, it's, it's, yeah, crazy. But yeah, as a fan, I was there to meet all my friends two years ago. Like the games were nice. The games were fun that they were happening, but I was there to see all my mates, you know? All the British people that I've been talking to online for so long that some of them I've already met at other uh, LAN events uh, and just to experience the whole 
ordeal together. We stayed in a, an Airbnb in Romford, just a little bit out, out of London, got there on, on the Elizabeth line and you're just there with the homies, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's great from that perspective. Um, being there as a member of the press, which is not a lot for Rocket League, which makes our jobs really easy. Because for a Counter-Strike event, I know that HLTV is, is the shift of Counter-Strike. Actually, we are the HLTV of Rocket League, but let's turn it around for once. And, but they have to compete with a lot of other esports media, a lot of other gaming media when it comes to the big Counter-Strike events. And for us, it's like maybe three other people who are there just with by themselves, mm-hmm. which is really fun because we get to do so much when it comes to interviews, when it comes to anything we need to do in the press room, which uh, is just a room a little bit off the side, out of the way of the, of the public, under the seats, basically under the arena, which it was freezing there, by the way. Uh, it was it was quite a good temperature, kind of warm, but still good in the arena, but it was freezing in that press room. But you're sitting there, you have a screen to watch the games, but with a little bit of delay, which is really funny because you hear people cheer in the arena <laughs> just two doors down, two yeah. doors down, and then you see the goal coming in. Uh, there was also a, one, a member of I think of Gentlemates uh, who was doing press as well, uh, and he was sitting there watching the games on the Gentlemates stream in French, and he was beh- he was ahead of the stream on on the oh, no. on the TV that we had in the press room. So if we looked over his shoulder, we could actually see who scored first. <laughs> It, it was a interesting, interesting room to be in with with these people working on interviews and everything. But you don't get to see much of the games, really. You you get to see some goals going in, but you lose track of what's actually going on in the tournament because you're already looking at who's going to win the next series. Of course, can't predict that. Sometimes you can see it going a certain way, but we've seen people coming back from behind, uh, and and you you. Ideally, want to interview some some of the winners. We also did some losers interviews this time, which I know a lot of people aren't really interested in doing because if you've lost, obviously you're not in the best mood to go talk to some people wanting to ask annoying questions. We try to keep it respectful. We don't really go like, "What was wrong? What? H- how could you lose this?" No, we're trying to talk a little bit about how the tournament run has been. You know. If they're made into worlds, how are they going to prepare for that? What if they learn from this one? All those kind of things. Um, I arrived there on Saturday, so I had just two days uh, for for me to be there. Although from home, I could also help out on on the Friday, transcribing some interviews because we want to get it on the website on Shift Early G. So we have it as video this time. We had two lovely people mm-hmm. with cameras running around, helping us out so much. Uh, taking some pictures, but especially for the videos on our YouTube channel, but also embedded on the website. It it was really great to have two angles, to have everything going on. And even then, you know, you you have some technical difficulties. This was the second time we actually did interviews on video. The first time was in Copenhagen, and it was really a learning uh, learning process there. Like the first day, we lost like three interviews in a row because... First, the microphones weren't properly turned on. Then the cable oh. wasn't properly connected. Uh, the third time, I don't even remember what went wrong, but it went wrong. And on the Saturday, I had a really good session of two interviews in a row with the winning and the losing coach. That was Casio from BDS and Eversax from Gentlemates. And both interviews were really good, but one of the microphones... Actually, yeah, the microphone that we were using at that moment, we were just using one with the, with the, the basically it's the little road microphone yeah. built into a stick that we can use. But it was turned on, we checked that, but it was muted. <laughs> so no oh, audio, no. and then, yeah, I mean... Dude, you're giving the, me PTSD right now. Like, this is just what, what odd AV production is, it's just... Yeah, like it happens, there's always you know, something. Yeah, you have to keep moving, get on to the next thing because you can't linger over it. The next match is starting, and you need yeah. to prepare an interview. You need to write down the questions, brainstorm what you're actually going to ask, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, still a lovely time. I'm so sad about that Eversex interview. They were they won against PDS. They eliminated the first seed out of Europe, and they were looking good. 
they were looking really good. Eventually, oh gosh, it turned yeah. out they were not even making to the to the grand finals. But at, in that moment, of course, you don't know that. And the quotes that that I would have loved to use for a title for an article uh, from Eversax was that they were playing better than they were in Copenhagen when they won the whole thing. So that's that's I mean that's amazing to hear from from mm. their coach. And honestly, he was right. They were. Yes, they didn't make it to the grand finals, and yes, they didn't get another major win. But they were playing extremely well on, on in those quarterfinals and before. So yeah, lovely to to see everyone, to talk to so many people, to get to do these interviews. Um, you don't really get to see a lot of it in the venue, like in the arena. You don't really get to follow all the storylines that you usually do from home. But uh, it's still to be there in the arena with all those people. London has so much history around it as well. I mean, it's just it's just an amazing experience. Okay, Jens, I have a question because I got to pop yeah. in to your um, like media room and yeah. it looked Came sick. By it looked so awesome. Like it was such a cool little space designated for press yeah. and media and stuff. You've done, you did um, Copenhagen, right? Did they have a similar setup for you guys there? Um, not really. Yeah. Copenhagen was an interesting venue because, well, obviously with Blast coming in and they didn't really have a lot of time to find the best venue. It right. was a very workable venue and they set up the stage really nicely. So especially watching from home, I can imagine it looked really good. But the venue itself, I mean, we've seen better for an RLCS major, which, I mean, at the time it was fine. It worked. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, a rather small sized hall which meant that there wasn't really any room for a media sure. room as well. So we actually got to use a room in the headquarters from the tennis club next door. Yeah, I remember you I, mentioning I that you were on the other, you were in a different building. We had to walk yeah. outside <laughs> to get back into a different door. So it was a different kind of room, a kind of similar setup with just a screen yeah. to watch the games. Um, uh, but... In that case, we couldn't really do anything other than have our own workspace there. True. And this time on the Sunday, Sundays are always different, of course, uh, because in this format, you have just three matches going on, right? On the championship Sunday, we've had that differently. We've had majors where you have the entire playoff bracket on the Sunday, which is really <laughs> incredibly busy. Awful. Terrible. And super long and kind of bad, yeah. Uh, but this for press is not ideal either okay. because it means you have the two semifinals and the losing teams are eliminated and right. they've just just gotten so close to the grand finals, lost. They want to go home. They don't want to talk to you, which fair enough. Yeah, We didn't do that many losers interviews anyway. If we could, we did. We prepared them. But yeah, sometimes, you know, they're just not available and that's how it is. It's so it their like choice it to come by. It seems like it is more so than anything, probably like kind of venue restrictions. You know, if there's space for it, then they'll hook it up. And if not, then they'll try to make a workaround for it. Well, I ask because oh. I've got to tag along once with Jalen and yeah. it was for the DreamHack in San Diego, which I know DreamHacks mm -hmm. are different, but they didn't like, there was a, a separate room where we would go do post game interviews and stuff, but there was not a space where, like oh, but that's, were... that has to do with ESL running DreamHack, right? Right, versus now. And Blast yeah. doing it very differently. Because what we used to have for Rotterdam and, well, all the way back even, the first time I went to do press was in Madrid in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, December, for Season 8. Uh, what we used to have was just like a press conference style. Yeah, that's interview. what they had so at the World Championship. They brought, they team. Guided, brought the teams, yeah. all three players, plus coach, brought them to the press room, set them down in front of like the the big screen with all the sponsors or logos from RLCS right. on it. And then you were sitting there in the press room. So it wasn't just a working space. It was also the, the place where you would be asking all the questions and you, yeah. you'd go around all the people who wanted to ask a question, whether that's Lola doing some media or uh, Gigi Recon. Or there usually whatever. be local media there as well. Like sometimes too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and especially these days, French media too. We've got uh, L'Equipe, yeah, yeah. the big French sports newspaper, which is really cool that they're covering it as well. Mm -hmm. With uh, Paul Arrivé. Um, but yeah, that's not how 
Blast does it. What they did for Copenhagen and for London this time is build a mixed zone, which is just off to the side of the stage, which is basically right next to the floor in between two parts of the stands, right? So you have people sitting basically above or to the side of you. And then after the match, they turn on big lights to shine on this area with, again, a big screen with all the logos and everything on it. That's where, uh, well, this time Leaf did the interviews on stage, but in Copenhagen it was there as well. Uh, or this time it was also the post-game like highlights, yeah, which were yeah. talked through by yeah. whoever it was, Jorby yeah. or CJ, or uh, I think Dazarin even did it once. Mm -hmm. um, so they would be doing the highlights there first, and then we would be waiting there, standing to get ready for our interviews because we would use the same space, which is really nice that we could use that kind of space because yeah, the yeah, lighting sure. is really good. Mm. The audio is a bit of an issue because you're right next yeah. to the crowd, yeah. which is really, really loud. So if there's something that can be improved on, well, that's it. But that's not how you do, do it for the winner's interview. For the winner's interview, we did go back to the conference style uh, interviews and brought right, yeah. G2 into the, the press yeah, room. Yeah. Uh, and if you watch the video back, you can see that they're all sitting down there. So it's a very different different right. setup. So yeah, okay, different style for Blast than, yeah. than ESL. Yeah, for sure. And then of course there are some limitations that maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and that's the, actually the only interview we did on Sunday, even though we prepared four more interviews, yeah. winners yeah. and losers for both semifinalists. Uh, but yeah, they they have to choose to go through that mixed zone, and usually they do. But off, on on the right, Sunday. Right the losing team was gone and the winning yeah. team instantly wanted to go prepare for the grand finals right. even the team that won the first semi-finals which still has quite a couple of hours until they actually need to play again but yeah they're, yeah, they're locked instantly in. locked in and gone so i can't blame them it right. is a little frustrating but it is what it is right well um i guess i mean i'll just keep rolling and, and what i'll do uh, initially is just kind of talk about some of the differences that I noticed um, mm. from my past experiences, whether it's fan or, or creator or whatever. Um, and I, I would just want to like highlight the biggest difference is, and I saw this discussion pop up for Worlds because they are selling, I don't know if y'all saw that, like the premium experience or whatever it is. Yeah, the box. Right. Yeah. Well, what it seems like is in the past, there has been a section called VIP and it is for players when they are eliminated it is for their families um it is for some content creators etc and some of these like i know people don't like that but like john sandman walking around the venue it, it's a problem because it just uh, you know a crowd forms and then you have this congestion and they can't move same with mm -hmm. sunless or musty or, or you know merchant some of the creators. players too like i remember some of the players at, I, I mean, at fort worth right probably like, more so the players yeah um I remember fort worth watching like from afar i was yeah. in, i wasn't they let anyone in the vip they let me in the vip um i was walking out to go to the bathroom because i was not aware there was a bathroom in the vip area so i'd have to step out to go to somewhere else in the arena and as i was stepping out Right behind me was Arsenal. Now I remember that's like peak SSG, Rattles, Daniel yeah. Arsenal. Like they were the he was still very popular right now. Yeah, right. Um, he was probably the most popular pro at that point, I would say. And as soon as he turned in front, like I was in front of him, I'm a bit, I'm like sizably taller than him. I'm probably like five, like six six inches taller than him, not to flex. But I kind of <laughs> moved to the sides, go to the bathroom, and as soon as I moved and the crowd kind of saw him. I was like getting bum rushed. Oh yeah, like, there was a bunch of people who yeah. turned around and immediately went up to him. And I was actually I had I had trouble getting back in from the bathroom because uh, there was just a huge line that formed. Yeah. So it's actually insane. I don't think people fans really understand it because yeah. you, know, you may only see one or two pros the whole time, but anytime these really popular pros step out, they can't go anywhere. That's right. So on that note, they had a lounge that was labeled vip but there was ticket access sold to it so mm. it, oh. and and there was creator badges that could go into that lounge but players weren't allowed in that lounge their mm -hmm. their um necklace did, like that you know players couldn't go yeah. there so all they had for players player family etc there was an elevator to go up into the arena and to go down and, and like out you're like you know, staff exit, I guess. But then once you're in the arena, all that was reserved for those 
players and families, et cetera, was the top row around the bottom section. And then from there, you just had to deal with everything else. So the players were just in the venue like normal, like everyone else, which is fine. I don't want to pretend like they can't be there, but there was just no space to go watch the game without somebody constantly in mm -hmm. your ear and wanting a signature or whatever else. So that, and look, I'm not a huge creator. Like that's not a problem for me. I can walk around fine, but the players, they just don't have a time. They don't have any time to breathe. You know, I mean, yeah. there is someone always, always by them, following them around. And, you know, with all due respect, I, I think there are occasions where maybe we don't pick up the social cues like, hey, I want to watch the game. Maybe, yeah. maybe we'll do the signature and then we move on and go back to our seat. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I, I mean, I can tell you, and I'm not going to mention the player or anything like that, but I watched probably 45 minutes straight where this guy just would not leave this player and their family alone. <laughs> I just felt so sad because there was nothing to be done about it. And so that is one uh, big difference. And, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm spoiled and, and wish I had a space or anything, but I feel like for the players and their families, like their immediate player group, like there should be somewhere for them to sit and watch the games or even just watch on a screen or something where mm -hmm. they're not, you know, at, yeah. at, that, where they're not at risk for being bombarded constantly. Yeah, I didn't even really notice that. Well, m mostly because I didn't really go yeah. into the arena that much, you, probably. You were kind of tucked but down in the dungeon. We, it's. I think it's more to do with the venue than anything. Right. Right. Uh, because I think in Copenhagen, there was actually a section of the, the stands, which yeah, was Yeah, I remember reserved. you could see Seiko, like when they were doing crowd shots, you could mm. see, not Seiko, there was another pro who you could like literally see was like sitting on the floor in Copenhagen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like watching I mean, it, it was, was like... very close to the KC fans, so it wasn't <laughs> ideal. <laughs> sure. Uh, but they, they, were, they had their own section where you couldn't really come in if you weren't a player yeah. or a caster or something right. like that. I so, assume yeah. they have it in Dallas too. It, Dallas it is a bit of the venue city. because yes, sure. you had just this one ring around the entire arena, which was kind of the top row, but it yep. did have a separate. It, th there was a divider. There like was a there concrete was. divider between yeah. the normal seats, I would, I'd say, and then the, I guess the VIP seats. But they were just the same kind of seats, and you had they to were, get there. That's through right. They the, were the they were the same seats, and they were through the through the arena. So yeah, there's no there's no. There's no there stopping no anyone else. Entrance to, or exit. Exactly. Yeah. Anyone yeah. could go sit down there if they wanted to. Yeah. And and it look, it's not a huge deal. We're not we don't have like crazy super celebrity stars. Yeah, that's we're still a, a small well. community. Yeah, I didn't I but didn't I, go, I do no. I do think uh I well, I know the players and their families would would certainly appreciate, you know, some space right. to just exist and watch. It the is matches. completely impossible to have this in some other esports. Like yeah. the yeah. CS pros, the League yeah. of Legends pros, I they can't are imagine, man. Us. Yeah, they, yeah. They couldn't. The league, well, the league thing, especially in Asia, it's like you can't let some like and you actually and like would a, not be able to like. Buy it's a genuine safety the hazard. Like it's a problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, but also it's from the players' perspective. They are way more demanding when it comes yeah. to that sure. kind of thing. I mean, it's some of the league difference. guys are getting paid millions of dollars a year right. to play the game, and you're going mean, yeah, to tell me I got to sit level next there. To this guy? There's yeah, a bit larger. Well, I mean, I think maybe I've told told this anecdote before, but it was um. In COVID era, the ESL guys were running uh, the first LAN in, in, in COVID era was in Stockholm, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, before that, they asked all the all the player managers or, or the region managers which of the players were smoking, so they knew who they needed to give like smoke passes to, so they could go on smoke breaks because it was really limited. How the players' movements was really limited because you yeah. needed to have separate and Mm -hmm. you know isolates everyone in covid times and then the regional managers were like uh nobody the average <laughs> age is like 16. yeah these are children. what are you talking about <laughs> nobody but these these, are, yeah. these tournament organizers are used to right. players yeah, yeah being russian and... russian 27 year olds like... right exactly <laughs> very very different crowd a little different so I that mean... just to just to continue on that like comparison from former events to this one that is probably the biggest difference that i noticed um, just from kind of behind the scenes, I guess. Yeah. On that note, a huge upgrade, an insane uh, difference from the past was the streamer spaces. So we've seen in the past where they hook up, like say Rocket Baguette, um, mm -hmm. Rocket Street. Rizzo. Rizzo had Rizzo his at times. That's right. They'll give them like a real 
set up for like a casting booth. Like you mentioned earlier, the, the backdrop with the sponsors and everything. They've got these professional setups, professional lighting. It's all super nice. And then they've also had some streamer spaces where it's just, it's very nice. I'm not saying it's not nice, but it's like a, a headset that has the mic on it. Um, it's not the most, you know, it's like the, not the nicest headsets. Um, it's just, it's, get, it's, it's enough to get by is what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. this, uh, this setup was incredible. Like the quality was insane. I mean, I, I streamed and, uh, some of the people were like, did you find a casting booth? I'm like, no, this is just what they're providing for everybody. So it was so wow. cool. They did a great yeah. job of like rotating because obviously you have like chief beef is there with space station. You've got danger taco with OG. Um, I was there with oxygen. So you had different streamers and there was only two spots that were open because you did have rocket baguette the full time mm -hmm. and, and the Spanish mm -hmm. version of the stream as well. So there's two spots and they, and, and I can speak from a smaller streamer standpoint. It, it's nice that they were willing to rotate. I think it's very fair if they wanted to leave some of the larger streamers on there, there's no complaints from me. I, I definitely understand like what is going on here, but I thought it was very cool that they made time and, and kind of allowed slots for like when your team is live, that streaming space is for oxygen or it's for space oh station. God. So Can I thought I that was very cool. Sorry. Yeah, go. Sorry, this is a this is a side. So I didn't know that until you just told me that. Yeah. And um, after Oxygen beat Gen G, I went in your chat and I was like, bow down to Jason. <laughs> and then your stream just <laughs> cut. And I was like, oh, did I piss Hootie off? Like, I feel so bad if you rage through the stream because I started like yelling about Michael ended the Gen stream. G. No, actually, I was lying. Michael ended the stream. <laughs> as soon as I saw the chat, I shut the computer down. And I afterward, I was like, I'm album. sure, yeah, I saw you come live on for the next one. And I was like, okay, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. But I was like, for that moment, I was like, oh, like, did I just get fired from my job? Amazing. Yeah, sorry, continue. What you uh, what you said is absolutely right. They they provided a lot for yeah. streamers, especially uh, previous events, Rocket Baguette, and also in, in, um, in Rotterdam, there was the Dutch... Uh, mm. broadcast from uh, Rocket Benelux, they had to uh, they had to rent their own uh, setups. Oh, really? Wow. All their, they had to, you know, bring entire PCs and wow. so many monitors. Oh, they had to arrange yeah. all that logistically themselves, which cost them quite a bit as oh, well. Yeah. But also, it's it's an entire, you know, logistical problem to get that all into the same, all set up in a really tiny space, I have to say. But yeah, uh, Blast are really thinking with the content they yeah. know what yeah that's right what content creators need and they're providing it and which is really cool it's it's there's a lot of ups and downs because i've also heard that the players were really dissatisfied with their so. uh, setups in the hotel in the practice rooms the, yeah. their, the, in, the power was was out for a while um, <laughs> yeah some of the rooms <laughs> that were set up for them were like something in Afterwards. between a change that room happened, and a bathroom okay, that, that happened to us so they were in the midst of scrims and mm. um, it was just one of the converters. That's all it was okay. because they were using like American plug-in PCs. Oh, right. And so I had that. Well, the converter blew and like lost power to the whole room. Ah, and nice. obviously we, we're not about to start messing with it. So we just called people. It took a while for them to get up there. It was, it was a simple fix, but you know, they lost right. an hour and a half of screen time. So yeah. they're going to be frustrated. But yeah, there were I think some that, complaints there. That's but, another thing yeah. that I think is very much dependent on the venue and, and what's available with their space. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. I, I know we. I know it's a historic place for the esport. Copper Box sucks. We've had enough <laughs> Copper Box. It's a bad I don't venue. Think so. It's no. Old. <laughs> Every you time know I watch it, I'm like, this venue is awful. This venue <laughs> looks terrible, and it, and and there's always issues. I listen. I I respect it for what it is in our place in our beautiful game. I think we've had. I've ha I've had three, enough of having to three watch. Three times is great. Out. Yeah, try we can tie a bow trilogy. On it. Let's Leave it move. There. Okay. No, I, all, I wholeheartedly disagree. <laughs> so I mean, all, you've been there, so you're probably with right, all the but... flaws that the venue might have. It's... So you do admit it sucks, though. You admit like there... objectively, it's not a good venue. No, no. I think for for the whole experience that the Copper Box gives at, to the fans and everything, it is the right size for a Rocket League major, not for yeah, Worlds, okay. way too small. But it's this nice five to seven k that you can really fill up because if you make it bigger you might be able to sell more tickets, especially yeah. if all the French teams know ahead of time and are qualifying. And if they make it. But um, <laughs> the, the thing is also, it is it is a really nice arena to make it loud, to make it work with the stage. It's great for that. 
and it has so much history now that yeah. I kind of want to see it become this regular thing. Maybe not every year, but the, uh, maybe uh, once every two years, we can come back to the home of Rocket League Esports, as some, as some yeah. people have already called it. Where you have IEM Katowice and the, and the Cathedral of Counter-Strike in Cologne. They return there every year. That's a bit much, but I would actually kind of like to see some places return to no, you know, I get agree. some history. I, I think that, I, like I said, if they're going to keep doing it, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's like whatever. I just personally, I, to me, yeah. the best venue that they've had, size, atmosphere, everything, was the one in Boston. The one in Boston looked amazing. It looked like the acoustics, like it felt super loud in there. Yeah. I would like well, that. Watching it from home, it was also probably the best NA land I've seen yeah, exactly. in terms of crowds. Like, so yeah. I see I see what you're saying in terms of like making sure like it's the right capacity and there is a ton of history there but yeah I get you I get it's, you It's like could we like I don't know we I don't some know the, I'm just some of the some of the practice rooms on site are just bathrooms converted Yeah like I, I, like, I think about LA right I've not heard that 2 years ago so there must be another way around yeah, it Yeah yeah It well, was just I, planning I, I guess I think about LA, right? LA was probably the nicest accommodation, like the mm. like the like because it's a it's right in SoFi Stadium, and is I don't YouTube Arena or something. Yeah. yeah so YouTube, what it is is it's in so SoFi Stadium. It. SoFi Stadium is a state of the art. I've been yeah. to SoFi Stadium for a NFL football game. Mm -hmm. The dis the um the distance between SoFi Stadium and the second nicest sports arena I've ever been in. Is larger than the second nicest and the twentieth nicest. It is yeah, an abs yeah, it looks like a spaceship better. in there. Yeah. I've seen and the like Super Bowl had, there, I believe. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Ago, and they so? have they they had their own practice rooms that were like actual rooms, rooms and stuff yeah. like that. But I think you're correct in the sense that it was only what a two K cap, and like that's just not enough for it's like an yeah. like a RLCS major anymore. Maybe like a shift shift summer league twenty four. Hey. Oh. <laughs> like Whoa! Yeah, like, I mean, 2K is what we had in Amsterdam in season two. That was back yeah, in 2016. Exactly. So, so it's that's like, different. I get why the cap matters. It's just that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no, no, no place is gonna be perfect, but there, there's definitely but, some history. And, in and there's still and... a lot to learn for the production for Blast and everything. Sure. Big shout out to Paul Shepard, Paul Baye, who used to run uh, along with colleagues Rocket Benelux. Uh, he's a homie. And he's done so much to make this major more special as well. He was the one coming up with the idea of including the 104 with the legendary mm -hmm. crowd in the predictions. Love you know, the, with the the first when there was no crowd yet with the Discord server, and then afterwards with the actual 104 crowd holding up the signs to to predict mm -hmm. their winner. Not really predict, but more cheer on their favorites, mm -hmm. I guess. And he managed to get us uh, one or two of these cards. We could have get, gotten more, but it was hard to get. He he didn't get, get his hands on more. So um, I just used this with then some of the, these are the actual interviews that questions that I asked. If you're watching this on YouTube and I was just holding one of these cards like that. And then I could ask, ask the interview questions like that. So <laughs> nice. yeah, it was lovely to, to have nice. someone like Paul Shepard, there's other people as well. But I have to shout out him because he was so involved with, you know, making the best of mm -hmm. what was going on at the defense. Yeah. Um, Hoodie, I want to ask you a question. Uh -huh. um, so this was your first time outside of the United States? Second. It was in Dusseldorf. Second. I saw him yeah, in Dusseldorf. Yeah, we didn't sorry. talk. First time I, in I've London. Yes, yes. How was London the city? How did, was it as magical as in the movies? Um, <laughs> man, yeah. Like... I'm from Arkansas, so understand the bar is on the floor. Um, anytime I go anywhere in Europe, which I've only been to two cities, but I mean, it's just insane, dude. It's so incredibly different. Um, you know, I'm coming from a place where like public transport is not a thing. My first 27 years of life, I never got on a train or a tram. I didn't know what that was. Um, have you ridden, have you been on the underground? Yeah, now. Wow, yeah, yeah that is an experience. But even Absolutely. even for me, who is used to trams and trains and everything, yeah. the tube in London is crazy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's super cool, man. I, I mean, like, so in Germany, I had one final flight from, I think, Frankfurt to Dusseldorf, the final connection. Um, and, you know, my, my flight from Chicago there is eight, nine hours. And 
while I'm in the air and I don't have service, it gets canceled. And then I'm landing and this is my first time leaving the United States. I'm, I'm worried like, I know that I'll be able to find people that speak English, but is it going to be common? You know, I, I don't know what it's going to be like. It's no problem. I just get yeah, off the flight. Scary. I go to the desk and they're like, all right, well, here's a train ticket instead. You'll be there in an hour and a half instead of an hour. I'm like, dude, <laughs> and that happens in America. You're just like stuck overnight, maybe two days, yeah. you know, like yeah. you're just screwed. And, and, and yeah, well, I shouldn't say, all, but not always, I guess it depends on where you're landing, what airport and whatnot, but it was just mind blowing for me. And it, it, you know, it's the same thing here. Like I get out of my plane, don't even leave the airport and load up onto yeah. a train for 50 minutes. And then, I am in a 10 minute walk to my hotel. Yeah, this, you've so... told me this story before. And immediately when you said you were taking a connecting flight from Frankfurt to Dusseldorf, yeah. there, something went off in my head like, <laughs> wait, why would why? you fly there? <laughs> right. There's a train going straight from the one city to the other. Yep. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it, it really was wonderful. Like I said, the bar is on the floor for me. I, I just enjoy being able to walk out of the hotel and go get coffee, go get breakfast. And, and there are an abundance of different restaurants that you can go enjoy, different things that you can go do. I didn't take, a t I was supposed to be there on Tuesday and I did have issues with my uh, travel there. So I got stuck in Houston overnight. So I lost a day there, but um, got there Wednesday, still a couple of days early. So we did a little bit as far as like looking around, but mostly just the walkable stuff. I didn't really go to, you weren't sightseeing. Like yeah, I didn't go se. sightseeing. You I just kind of like a whole lot. But yeah, the the you know just just the walkability is crazy. Like a you know a city like that is so wild. And I I I want to say before anyone gets mad, I know we have that in America as well. I've experienced it in New York. It's very magical there. Uh, Boston but it, apparently is pretty good. Yeah, it, it's um it's just a very cool experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's very different from what I'm used to. You know, there's there's people lounging reading a book, laying on the, on the lawn. It's very, very different from, from what I'm used to. So it was very cool. What was not very cool was our performance. That was not very Speak cool. on it. Tell so, us about, I want, I want to, I want, what, what was inside the mind of Hootie yeah, Who in yeah. that absolute highs and lows roller coaster that was the Bro. Oxygen Swiss? Okay, so... From a fan perspective, a mega fan, a hired fan, if you will, <laughs> uh, Ronin. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this. This is a Cinderella story. You could not have, you could not have built a better thing to, to try to accomplish. You have to go to the grand finals. Nothing less. If you want a chance at Worlds, you have to go to the grand finals. You've got a, a full English team. Well, Oski's dual citizenship, but you've got a full Two English a roster. Man. We're in London. This, I mean, it's just, it's it's magic waiting to happen. And it's London, Joyo, he's back. This is his, uh, you know, it, it's it's his time to regain and put himself back on the map. This is, you know, you 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 saw the, uh, or read the interview from Shift. I think he's very high on his current teammates. Um, no shade yeah. to, to, to former teammates, but we saw that they are capable of competing, at least online we saw, they're capable of competing with the best in the world. And I think even in the Furious series, you saw a much better oxygen. Uh, but that is me getting super excited, very enthusiastic, and, and just anticipating what could be greatness. It could be awesome. I mean, that, you know, if they were able to accomplish that, even if they go and lose in the grand finals and knock Carmen Corp out, that is something that we'll talk about for a long time because that's a great Carmen Corp team. And we start terribly. Horribly, we lose to power, bro. What I tell you, Hoodie? What I tell you about the OCE? It's a little bit stronger than you think. You got to watch no, out for not. OCE. It's not though. It's not. <laughs> it's not. We played terrible. Power didn't make mistakes, and they did what they needed to do. Okay, I'm not trying to discredit them. They deserved that win, but they didn't outplay. We were horrendous. Yeah, we were terrible. We. I, I, here's what I think happened. And, you know, Snasky is the one that's talking to the team. I'm not in their head. They don't talk to me about that. You know, I, I give them encouragement and, you know, try to support them where I can. But that, you know, they're, we're not discussing how they feel and strategy and things like that. But my assumption is everything that I just described about why it's so exciting from a fan is weighing on them. You know, and, and, and from a player perspective, you cannot, you can't think about that. You've got to play the game in front of you just like you would any other game. And I think that pressure of wanting to perform, I mean, you, you guys think about it. Oski and Joyo have had a rich history at lands with success. Oski has been 
top four top many four times, times. Yeah. right? Um, and and straight away, like right out of the gate, as soon as he became a pro, he was already top eight, top four yeah. at lands. You've got Joyo with wins, um, second place finishes, and they have not had the most successful last 12 months. And I think they see a lot of their peers, Ato with Carmi Corp, uh, you know, Rise and Batira for Joyo, finding plenty of success still. And I think they desperately wanted to show, hey, we're still here. We still got it. And then, like I said, I think you add in that story of got to make it to the grand finals. You add in Joyo returning to London. And then you add in just the pressure that, like, the season's over if they don't perform. I think, it, I, I think unfortunately, I think they let that, that stuff creep into their mind. And, and you saw Oski's tweet after the game. They played not to lose, or they played to mm-hmm. not lose, however you want to phrase it. They didn't play to win. They didn't play confidently. And I think it was very apparent in the way that they played. I mean, they're, look, again, no disrespect, but there's no way that they should be outpaced by power. Not that team. And they were. They, you know, they got outplayed in, in, in most facets of the game because they were just not confident and not communicating well, not executing mechanically. And I think a lot of it was nerves. A- again, I want to make this very clear. This is not from the players. This is me speculating, just thinking about the scenario and, and even thinking about how I might respond in, in those shoes. Yeah. So, And I mean, uh, you could see it on the field, right? Sure. It, it's no shame to play a close game with power yep. because, yes, they You're did show team. up. They're they're a good team, and they, I think I uh, quite underrated them. But it is yeah, you did. It is not, you know, the oxygen level yeah, no. to lose to power in this fashion one three. I mean that's right. not. And and this is what I kept this is what I kept saying. You know, once everything was all said and done, that loss. And obviously, it hasn't. It the, the rest of the tournament hadn't transpired yet. But that loss is what did it. Because mm. you think about Gen G and Furia, and, and there are some gentlemen, some BDS, and all these. They ran into, and and the reality is, if we don't beat one of those teams one time throughout Swiss, then you don't deserve top eight, right? So I'm not, no. we didn't deserve it. But our problem was we ran into those teams in too late. Like Furia fell. Who, who did they lose to in round four? Do y'all remember? Uh, Space Station. So they lost a space no, station. Three, well, round three was space. It was um, no, they, they lost an upper round four to space yeah. station for sure. So, and then you had Gen G losing to G two in round four. So, though, like, I'm sure that those teams would like to win those, but they have that extra life. When when we started running into the tough talent, it was already round five. Mm-hmm. You know, what well, I'm saying? also, I, I was gonna actually I wanted to bring this up because I was watching you know noted G two fanboy podcast, the Chalkcast, the other day. And Rizzo brought up that he was like, oh, sometimes Swiss is boring to me, especially early on, because it feels like we just need to get it over with. But I think Oxygen, personally, was a striking evidence of the of the other, and that the first round of Swiss is by far the most important. And the reason is, is that because in the 1-1 one, one, and 2-2 two, two rounds, most likely you're going to, like, you have to play a team that comes down from the right. upper round, if you're in the lower round, you're essentially fighting against the current the entire time. Yeah, 100%. Like when you go up to that 1-0, right? When you come down, there's a good chance you're playing an APAC team, an, an OCE team, Sam 2, Mina 2. But when you're going up in the yeah. one and the one two rounds, you got to play another NAEU, you know, top Mina, top Sam team. Mm-hmm. And it can it can kill your run. It can yeah. literally kill your run because you're running into, you know, Jason and you're running into Furia. Like when in the other side, you know, Gen G, for example, round five, but they won that first match. You know, they beat Oxygen, and then they get power round five, who just didn't look competitive. Yeah, we, we... No, that's that's literally what happened when Oxygen lost to Gen G in round three. That's right. One to three. I mean, yep. if they manage to win there and go to the upper round four, even if you don't win that, which was exactly. considering the teams that were going to that upper round four, very likely that they were not going to win in round four, that Oxygen, after, you know, playing Gen G in round three, were going to go to round five, Either way, yeah. through lower round four or through upper round four. But going there through upper means that you're playing a team, well, not power, but secret maybe. Sure. Yeah. A twisted mind. Instead of, maybe. Well, a, a team secret instead of a Furia. Right. Th- yeah. There's literally. The, the... Well, I think the easiest way to say it is we just wasted our loss. Like that. Yeah. You know, you don't, you, you don't have. Yeah. You just don't give yourself any wiggle room. So, yeah. yeah the power it was always going was to tough. be tough. 
Um, we bounced back and, and played Gladiators and, and beat them 3-0 as we should. And I, I mean, I'm again, no disrespect, but I, I wasn't even impressed with that series either. You know, they got the win, but it still wasn't, it wasn't like a, a super dominant performance that was inspiring confidence. And then we fall into Gen G in the round three. The boogeyman. Say and, his uh, name. The boogeyman. We, uh, the series started great. I think it went one and one to kick yeah. things off. And um, and then Jason just started started. He he did some. He was he had he was on a mission. I think Vatira paid him off again, like he did in San Diego. <laughs> what the hell was that? He just turned into like prime prime rogue first killer for two games for no yeah, reason. Yeah. They, they they definitely played well. I still think that um, the guys were, you know, they still had that fear. I guess maybe fear is the easiest way to say it, that fear of losing instead of, you know, fully fully sending it and and just hoping for the best. Um. And then I think we finally began to find our footing in the Twisted Mind series, which again was still not super impressive, but it felt a little bit more confident. It felt more like oxygen. They were definitely more like foot on the gas instead of um, so patient and so, I guess, just lacking confidence in their movement and their control of the ball. And then by the time we got to Furia, I thought they actually played pretty good. They played some pretty good Rocket League. They should have concluded that in round four, and we're not going to make any excuse about the timeout, uh, or not timeout, but like the, the pause. We're not going to make an excuse about that. Um, they should they should finish that up. They're 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 I mean they Fury handed them a goal at zero seconds. That yeah. should not be a goal. Fury handed them a tying goal and gave that overtime to oxygen. They should have put that away. They were up two one in the series. You got two more chances. There's no excuse. And so you know the the unfortunate reality is we didn't deserve top eight. We didn't and and you know you never know. Obviously things can turn around from Friday to Saturday. But if, if that's how they were going to play in the top eight, I don't think they were going to make it very far anyway. So. It was always going to be really tough. They're in this Absolutely. position where there's some teams like Genji, like Furia, who are just more favorites to make it far into the tournament than Oxygen. And if you're Oxygen and you're playing them, yeah, this is really tough. Like, yes, you can say that they got some confidence from playing Twisted Minds. Because, yes, obviously, sweeping Gladiators is not going to give you the confidence you need. You need a little bit more than that. But once you're lost against uh, Gen G and you're making it to that lower round four, I mean, it doesn't even really matter what you do against Twisted Minds while you have to win, but you're going to face Furia. I mean, you had Furia or BDS. Those are the two pe people you could have faced. Yeah, it was Furia or I, I, BDS. So either I don't way, know if you're, I mean, you feel confident either, either way. way. I mean, I think up. Oxygen also got kind of screwed by um, just SSG and how good they looked like they were supposed to be like kind of a clear top eight and then ssg was going to be that ninth team where sure. it's like yeah maybe well, we, they can sneak in round we, five we kind of spotted them too because we yeah. gave them power yeah and so it's like they should have been facing us but they i think because of that um and be, well space station right they took they took falcons to the brink right we all mm -hmm. i almost got that right from our predictions video i was a little upset when it didn't happen um, and then they beat Furia. Like, they yeah. beat the team Oxygen didn't beat. Yeah. And when you have a team that's supposed to be on the fence and, like, and they come out and they just play super well, that's a team that can't yeah. make it. There's another yeah. team that, sorry, they make it and There's now another no team can't make right. it. And so then it even puts more pressure on you because it's like, we thought there was going to be this eight spot that was going to be super up for grabs with teams around exactly. our level, right? right. The Secret, the Space Station, maybe OG, maybe Twisted Minds. Then one of those teams comes out and just flies through the Swiss, right? Looks really good even in their one loss. And now you're stuck trying to, now you're competing with BDS and Gen G, right? Like those are the last teams that yeah, you, yeah. you're seeing. And Furia. So there's four teams. BDS, Gen G. Can you imagine if I told you, if I put in our prediction video and I had BDS, Oxygen, Gen G, and Furia all in round five, you guys would be like, you're insane. We're not doing that. <laughs> Veto, yeah, this, yeah. Right? It's just what happens. Yeah, yeah right. right? So it, it's goes. tough. It's tough when another team comes through and really plays strong and, and you're yeah. and that underperformance that you have <laughs> early starts mm -hmm. to magnify even more. Yeah, yeah, magnify for sure. Well, I, um, you know, I, what I will say is I'm, I'm proud of the way that they handled, um, I mean, I hate to say, but failure. That's what it was. You know, it was, they did not achieve what they wanted to achieve, even if, even if we set that line at top eight, right? We, we failed to, to do that. So I'm proud of the way that they, they handled that. Um, you know, I have seen in the past, and we have seen even in the community, because sometimes this blows up publicly, but we have seen teams just completely explode um, mm -hmm. after underperformances, and, and the guys still did not, they did not behave that way. They, they, they still have confidence in one another, and I think they are um, optimistic about their, their, their future with, with one another. So I think, um, I think that displays a level of maturity uh, despite the rough showing at the, at the major. We do, well, have, we do have one highlight, though. Yes. 
Oxygen Hootie Who took home a W. <laughs> a trophy was had. A trophy <laughs> was had for Oxygen Esports. As, Den as Denzel Washington once said, I'm leaving here with some. <laughs> Hootie Who, and I'll say it because yeah, I don't want you to have to pat yourself on the back because you deserve <laughs> all the pats on the back. Hootie Who, our Hootie Who, shift cast Hootie Who. That's the came one. Came first mm. in the most important part of the, the week. Most important. Dazarin's uh, global dap up power rankings top and when i saw that tweet show up in my timeline i was like <laughs> that's my guy that's my boy hootie who just just showing up and performing listen maybe his there was nerves Amazing. on joyo there's nerves yep. on oski there were no nerves on hootie who when he saw Dazarin. just i know that sound was probably so clean Chris. fingers perfectly interlocked <laughs> so hootie <laughs> Winner's interview, okay? How yeah. does it feel? After all the work you've put in, you know, 90 past two last oh, yeah. last few weeks, mm -hmm. how do we feel about, you know, finally taking on the dub after after all these years? You know, it does feel good. Uh, as, a, as a resident in North American, we don't take many dubs in the Rocket League world, so we'll take them, whether it's a dap-up competition. It's starting to change, it seems. That's right. Had it, a double it, this week. Right. Double London last week. London was a, a catalyst for yeah. the, the future results. Exactly. In eight. It's about to take control. French, uh -oh. francophone? I don't mm -mm. think so. That's it's coming back to North American soil. We got the DAPA. I don't know. By the way, I don't know if you saw, I think it was like the top four. Yep. Was all uh, Americans. So they shake hands in Europe, apparently. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing over there. Y'all got to get your DAP game up. That's for sure. No, it feels great. You know, it feels great. I, I think this is also one for our old boomers. Yep. You know, back in the day when you used to go outside, and actually give high fives. Now we just sit in here, grab our controller, yeah. and game yeah, it GG. up all day. You GG. just press GG. GG. Press G twice. <laughs> what controller is that, Hoodie? Oh, that is the uh, Rust Master eSwap X Pro no controller. No should. Uh, oh. You should report Bestie Who. Go to, go to twitch.tv forward slash Hootie Who. All right. And I want you to go to the About section and click my link. Buy one, Amazing. Of, buy one of these controllers. We are twinning. You know, I, I need a new controller soon anyway. I don't use it much anymore, but it is absolutely broken, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm oh, we're I, twinning, Hootie. I mean, Amazing. Um, if, you, if you like the Xbox form factor, they're pretty neat. Yeah, uh, depending on the I version like that you that. get, like you can you can pop out the sticks, which is like nice. crazy. So if you get stick drift, you know, you can fix that, that up there. So yeah. they're, they're I did guess cool. the, the moment I booted up Rocket League after coming back from London, yeah. stick drift. Oh, no. But hey, yeah, I could, news. Swap, I could swap it out. So yeah. One, you could, yeah, that's right. You can swap, you can swap left to right, but you can also just buy a new stick pack for 20 bucks. Yeah, actually it fixed itself. I just had to use it for a bit, go and oh, free play and nice. uh, it's good again. Yeah, anyway, yeah, listen, we, congratulations. We'll take home one dub, NA on top. Yeah. Two dubs in NA, yeah. for NA. One more important one, obviously. Uh, Hootie, showing everybody how to greet another uh, in, 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 in just a... A really impressive and respectful way, and you gotta love that. Right, right. Um, I one hope thing I can make Hoodie, it to if, if, Dallas for yeah. uh, Worlds, so if, I can if actually Jens learn goes the ways to of Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> yeah, if Jens goes to Dallas, first thing, it's it's a there's a P at the end, not a B. It's a very common misconception. <laughs> oh, the did dab I say is dab? this? Is this the popular dance? Yeah. Did I say dab? dab? I mean, you got I that dab, dab, of course. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the art of the dab. Uh, Hootie will be giving Jens. I don't need it, obviously. I'm from North Honestly. America. We just we do this normal. But I, I Hootie, will you take Yen under your wing? Uh, of course. I'll I'll give out some freebies right now. Here's what I, I here's what I'm gonna tell you. Number one, you can't be limp. Okay. I saw way no. too many limp hands. Talk. I don't know what the heck is going on. You gotta get a cup. There's yeah. gotta be something to make some landing, noise, catch the landing air. spot. It needs and then to be a landing spot. Yen's already got it right there. Now here's the thing. And look, I even got a target. When you are when you are approaching someone. You can't be looking at their eyes, their hair, their yeah. shoes. You got to be hand. looking at what you're doing. Look at the elbow, okay? Mm -hmm. That is going to be your key. You look at the elbow, give it a nice. You don't want to go too uh, too straight mm -hmm. or too high. You got to be a nice, nice forty five degree angle right in the middle. Eat it there with a good clap. Okay, okay. okay. All right. This should be behind Again, the paywall. Elbow. I don't know why you're giving this up for free. Because we want more good daps. All right. I, I'm telling you, it was weak, man. It's weak sauce over there. We got. I don't know what is the deal with the noodle hands. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what is going on. on with that. Put some weight. Maybe, maybe because there. everyone's looking at your hair, so they're not looking at your elbow. It's well, now true. it's gone. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys. You know, I got to I got to have my own personal major, so I didn't have to listen to you guys tell me that I was wrong for two hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, listen, uh, it's cool to have different perspectives as a creator, as a media member, 
Um, you know, we've heard from different players. We've heard from casters on other, on other podcasts. So it's cool. It's cool that we have such like a comprehensive review of like what an RLCS yeah. major is really like. And it's good because now there's such a, a vast library of sort of things for our blast to take from and, and, and pull the strengths out and, and for get sure. rid of the weaknesses. So yeah, now that we're, now that we've heard from you guys, uh, we've let you guys take the start. Like, let's talk about my domain. Let's actually talk about Rocket League esports. Um, is that your we domain? got some stuff. You're gonna claim that. Stuff talk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I'm I'm the one that's always right. You know, I was right about beast mode. I was right about mode. All right, I was right about Zen. Dude, I'm okay, right. look, you. Okay, here's the thing. You're just you know, asking you, for and it. If, you listen, added a whole extra word. You the like the whole premise is to trim it down single syllable mode, but you said the full name and then went back and corrected. Because I wanted to like I wanted, wanted to, to troll. the masses before I started to troll. Like, going. Anyway, to troll. listen, and by the way, just going forward, if you guys ever see a clip of me saying that Gen G is the best team in North America, deep fake AI, please report it. <laughs> deep fake. Thank you. Um, anyway, <laughs> there's there's a bunch of stuff that happened when you get when we were gone. Um, we did a major recap, but we haven't talked about it. First thing is our own tournament, Ooh. which all the teams have been announced for the league play. Ooh, right? That's right. Um, and Before so we, we have mass. six teams. We have six teams that will be going into it. There's a bunch of other ones that are going to be competing. I believe the seventh through 16th invited teams that will be playing in the play-in will join a bunch of other teams from an 128 team open qualifier. Um, but the teams that we will see for sure in the league play stage of the shift summer league in North That's America, we got direct a- invitations and yeah. accepted them. Yeah, these are these are we got some we got a banger it's in bangers. North America. We've got G two, the reigning major champions, probably Good. the best team uh, in of, of the year this year, the best team of the season so far. We've got their primary rivals, Gen G Mobile One Racing. We've got Space Station, who have you know quickly made themselves a real contender to for a top eight top four internationally uh og who uh will be at the world championships as well and then two teams that will that aren't going to be at the world championship but were our na mainstays as well the shopify rebellion two-piece esports and rmc Reddles magic cheese formerly luminosity uh they will be playing as the sixth invited team so all top six teams in america oh, in the na will i hope be- they change their minds and go with the peeps Okay, what, we, that's a whole other thing because I'm pretty sure that there's other people who have dibs on that. Okay, I think there's other people because Reddles joined before Gyro and Mist. Mm. And I assume one of them will probably be taking that name. Ah. Um. Because okay. Oh come on. Oh come on. He was not an original peep. You know. You know who the. Peep. You know who the actual rights to the peeps has. Jalen. That's Jalen. That's our ship. Jalen. <laughs> The go CEO Jayski made the made the logo. He did. But I feel like I feel like Emmy, he, Emmy he, Award winning Jalen, by the way. And What's Stanley Stanley Cup champion. Stanley, Stanley Cup champion. Stanley Cup Jay-Z. ring bear. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, come on. Anyway, uh, in Europe we have less top teams, but still a lot of really really good ones, and it's going to give I think Europe a chance to. Show that depth that we always talk about. Yeah. So we've and a got a chance for Oxygen to win it all, Odie. Yeah. Oxygen is the lone land qualifying team. Why won't I focus? Uh, that will be here. But we also have Jobless, formerly Moist, Ixo, uh, and Oli, I, th- I believe, will be competing with a new third on that one. Um, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, Luna Galaxy. So I, I don't know who they'll be playing with, but I believe it's going to be probably most of the still same roster. Um, and then Resolve, Endpoint, and Team JJ Rocks, which is a new organization, I believe, that has invested right. in Team 3. So, uh, Mark by and Stake, uh, I don't know if they've confirmed their, confirmed their third yet, but I know those two players have been in the announcement. Um, so, yeah. That's right. And let me, let me just get this out of the way. If you've not been on Reddit or Twitter for the past week, you might be wondering where the other, you know, major level teams in EU. Uh, they have gotten invitations for it, but have rejected those invitations. The organizations decided not to participate. And yeah. that's and all no I'll hard say feeling. about it. Yeah, no hard the, feelings. The, not here. If if they want to explain themselves, they can. Yeah. I'm not, not gonna not stop big, them, yeah. but it's not I don't feel like it's my place or Shift's place to to go yeah. into that. That is just uh, the way uh, things are right now. And that means that uh, we have some other teams in Europe coming in. 
So it's going to yeah. be an exciting competition either way. Uh, but oh, yeah. if you want to see like the, the RLCS major contending teams, that's probably going to be more on the North American side. Uh, no one watches Europe anyway because it's a fringe <laughs> lane region. <laughs> So it's all good. I mean, only one of those regions has Daniel. So, I mean, you know, please, please focus. Only um, one of those regions has me staying up till 5 a.m. Yeah. Because it starts at 7 p.m. for Europe in European time zone. And it also starts 7 p.m. in NA, in an NA time zone, which is 1 p.m. Keeping you up, a.m. entertaining. For me, so it's gonna run until like five PM. It's it's midweek too, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So uh, oh yeah, you're gonna be all jacked up. Um, I'm, it's my responsibility to make sure the interviews are coming in at the right moment. The the broadcast is running somewhat okay. We have a little bit of moderation going on in in the chat, you know that kind of thing. But it is not my task. It is my responsibility. So if I can relinquish those tasks to other pl- people. It's just my responsibility that it needs to happen, not that I need to do it. Oh, so, I see what you're saying. You could delegate. I can delegate it. He's yeah. trying to like he's trying to get me to do it, but I'm not <laughs> gonna do it. So, like, no, nah, I'll, I'll probably still do it most of the time, but maybe I'll I can manage. If you to... call me, if you call me at late and you're like, I need you to do this, just know I'm not gonna do it because I have. I have <laughs> no, I'm not. Gonna you do have it. actually work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, maybe I, um, quickly, I can get a week of going to bed before five a.m. Let's go. Um, who, so I feel like, um, I want to talk about North America, but I feel like it would be kind of disingenuous to be like, which team is the favorite? Like the major champions who won four originals are the favorite. So which team are you most excited to see in a league play format? Because I feel like there are certain teams where I feel like it might, it might be, uh, more beneficial. Other ones are more detrimental. Um, there's some teams that we haven't seen in a while, who are you looking forward to watching in the uh, NA Shift Summer League? Just from these six invited teams. There'll be other teams as well, but just from these six invited teams. For, for North America, you mean, right? Yeah, yeah. I know what I know. my answer. Go it's ahead. OG. Nice. They are OGs. It's in the name. So if we're bringing back the league format, it is them that I'm interested in seeing. Okay. Because it's such a different format. Players like JNAPs know what's going on there. And I want to see them coming back into it because they've not been, you know, faced with uh, a format like this for multiple years. And now, even though we bring it back in a smaller capacity, so bring it back. And, you know, can they perform week after week? It's three weeks of league play and then a week of playoffs for the top six. I'm, I'm really interested in, in seeing a team like OG do well, maybe. Who knows? How about you? Um, I think it'll be interesting for OG because this kind of represents their last chance to get high level competitive reps in before the world championship. And they clearly have some stuff to figure out. I mean, they've been, they've convinced us twice in an online portion that they're like a contender for top eight. And then they've gone out one, three, both times. Um, So this is it. If they don't figure out what they're going to do like differently now on land, this, like they're just going to end up where they were is in, in that lower round four. So I, I agree. Hoodie, what about you? Um, I, I'm excited to see Rebellion. I, but uh, whether it's league play or whatever, I just, I like, I like Rebellion. I think that team is, um, an exciting one that I, I personally believe kind of underperformed, um, mm-hmm. at least consistency wise, you know, missing the, missing the event, I think really put a damper on their season. We saw it with Carmen Corp, um, and Moist, et cetera. So, you know, th- those kind of things, those kind of slips can, can really hurt a team's potential long-term. Um, in, in regards to RLCS. So I'm excited to see that. Uh, on the flip side, though, I, I am excited to see Luminosity. I think that's a team that is like heavily reliant on game planning. Mm-hmm. And obviously that doesn't fare too well in, in Swiss. So, you know, one of the differences with league play is obviously you can see who you're going to play. You know what match is coming up. And I know that the Luminosity team with Greg and, and Kevbert, they do a lot of, you know, they do a lot of front loading as far right. as uh, strategy and, and game plan and stuff. So I'm, I'm interested to see how they fare as well. Yeah, I want to see them come out with kickoffs, with kind of certain passes, certain demo plays that are almost set pieces. Of course, a, a kickoff is always a set piece. Yeah. But I want to see them bringing out 
specific things that work against specific teams. Right. Um, sorry, I've just been completely... I, I wanted to make a joke about this. I wanted to make sure I was confirming it, so I've been looking somewhere else. Speaking of league play, guess who played a, prof a competitive match yep. for actual money today? Uh, there was a team with JNAPS on it and there was a team with Lethemir on it. Talk about a throwback. There's a Canada Day event going on that I didn't know. I can't what? believe that I didn't I didn't know this. Canada Day event and Team Ontario featuring Leth and Team Nova Scotia featuring uh, JNAPS made the grand final and uh, I just clicked over to see it. I thought that's a perfect tie-in to, to the league play. We got JNAPS and Lethemir playing against each other in 2024. This is the best NA year of all time. Yeah, I'm what year like, is it? Um, anyway, the team I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to watch most is uh, Shopify Rebellion because oh. I think they're going to prove to everybody that they should be at the World Championship. Um, I'm arming the Rebels. I know I've been I've been in and on this team all year, um, but uh, two piece, uh, my dog, statistically the best player in North America this season. He was a better statistical player than First Killer for the oh. first, I think that's the first time that's happened in like three or four years. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know if they're better at Rocket League than OG. I mean, I know that they couldn't beat OG in that moment, you know, but European fans are allowed to cope by saying that Falcons aren't actually better than General Mage. They just, like, iced up that one time. It was close. I'm going to say the same thing for Shopify and OG. Um, And I think they're going to prove to everyone that maybe even if they didn't make it further than OG, they would have been a more fun time on land. Because this team, I know we've talked about it before, they're all offense, they're all aggression, um, and I think that actually works. If they could have stuck to their play style, I guess we'll never know how they how they would actually play on land. But if they could have stuck to their play style uh, on land, I think they would have beaten teams because I think uh, I think that that sort of offensive game plan can often throw nervous teams off. Um, and I think that that'll that'll happen. That'll happen in the shift summer league. I think people are going to remember how much fun it is to watch the Rebels play. And they're going to be sad that they won't be able to see them in uh, in in Fort Worth in a couple of weeks. Mm. I like that. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that OG and Shopify Rebellion are so close in the RLCS in terms of overall performance. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to de these teams the most, right? Yeah. Because those are the teams that should realistically be making it into that top six yeah. at the end of league play to go into okay. the playoffs. Mm -hmm. but that's where they're really going to get tested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That last week. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. uh, at the start of August. Well, and in terms of Europe, like we mentioned, some of the top organizations in Europe chose not to compete. It is what it is. But we do get to see a lot of players that are still normally populating main events in Europe. And oh, Europe absolutely. is an incredibly deep region, right? Maybe easily the deepest region in the world right now. Um, so... For my question for you guys for the European leg of the Shift Summer League for these six, um, which team do you think will be the best? Is it easily Oxygen? Or do we think that there's another team that's been sneaking in? I would like to say easily Oxygen, but I, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that uh, we're going to see some roster changes. I think a lot of times, especially early, you know, we've, we've dubbed it the honeymoon period. But I think a lot of times mm -hmm. people are, players are, excited to play with new players they've just come off of maybe a you know a frustrating season um you know changing up that environment a lot of times can can just provide some new energy new life and so i think and, and, and hey we've got jd rocks a new org you know picking up a team they're catching a paycheck so um anything can happen here i mean depending on who luminosity uh luminosity uh luna galaxy is playing with i think that's a very solid roster i think that resolve roster is very solid as well in point um i don't know what they're going to throw out there but uh, every iteration of Endpoint seems to be like a kind of a sleeper team, an underdog team that will occasionally pop into those top eights and, and take down some of those top teams. So, I, hey, I mean, I would like still there. I would, yeah, I would like Oxygen to uh, to to run through things, but I don't think it's going to be super easy. Um, I think we're kind of all forgetting. And now, like I said, I don't know what the roster locks are. I think we're kind of forgetting about Luna Galaxy. They looked really good last time we saw. They did. They made the grand final. In Europe, they lost to BDS, but everyone was losing to it's BDS. Easily their best point. event. Yeah, and um, I don't know if they're going to be playing with the same roster. I would assume they are because uh, a Chronic was sort of the piece they added, and they're still playing under the Luna Galaxy banner. 
So I feel like he's got to be there, right? I mean, I, that's just all speculation. But, I mean, I feel like Atomic is a player, uh, EU Atomic is a player that really would have, like, benefited from, um, really would have benefited from league play. Because I feel like he is, like, that sort of pop-off player that probably thrives when he has more time to prepare because he understands where he'll get his shots more as opposed to sort of like the Swiss up and down and running through a bracket. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I've believed in this team a lot. I think if they didn't have a sort of a hiccup right in the middle of the split, that, that seemed to be due to some hours issues or whatever, they would have made the major. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to take Luna galaxy. I think Luna galaxy is going to be the best team of these six. I still think it should be oxygen. I, I agree with, with Hoodie, even though he's paid to say it. it, it there's teams like Luna Galaxy would, I think, be the, the, the first one to mention in teams that could mm-hmm. really challenge Oxygen um, to that Shift Summer League victory. But I, I think we shouldn't count out a team like Jobless. Uh, they're still here. And then Endpoint and Resolve, I like as a British der- derby, but... I don't really see them <laughs> going for, uh, you know, an overall win in, in Shift Summer League, but you never know. You never know. It, it is completely different to play not based on that momentum of right. playing match after match after match. You kind of come in cold, more or less. Of course, you've warmed mm-hmm. up, you've prepared, you've done much more preparation than you would usually do, hopefully, if they take it seriously, you know, actually look at what the other team brings to the table instead of just trying to play your own game because that's the only thing you can do in an open format like we've had in RLCS lately. So it is going to be completely different. But if you have the quality to bring it during those few matches, because yes, you're going to be playing a couple of matches every week, but it's nowhere near just the vast number of matches that they're used to playing nowadays. Mm-hmm. You have to perform in those matches. So the pressure is kind of on mm-hmm. uh, as well, even though it's not RLCS and it doesn't lead up to any lands at the moment. Maybe at some point, maybe... Uh, Wait a second. YouTube the theater? YouTube theater? Maybe uh, next YouTube year, theater, potentially? YouTube, YouTube theater? YouTube, <laughs> can't we? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, mean, nah, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's a completely different system yeah, it is. that can benefit some teams that mm-hmm. can really also you know, cause disaster for teams who you'd expect to do well. But if they're not warmed up, if they're not coming in prepared for their opponents, I mean, they're gone, you know, they have to yeah. play the, the next week. But if they're not getting the points, you might even lose out on uh, on, on those top six for the playoffs. So and that's it's where a the money different is type made. of preparation, right? Because mm-hmm. I feel like in the open system, the preparation is making sure your mechanics are on point, making sure your team's on point and and having a play style that you feel really confident in against any yeah. type of other play style because you yeah. don't know who you're going to play next. You need but in to this focus one, on yourself. In this one, it's like if if you don't, you know, let's say there's what six days in between events. If you're not mm-hmm. doing two days against one matchup, two days against the next matchup, to the next one on replays, and the other team is, and they know you better than you know yourself yeah. in yeah. a Did five I... game series, it could be bam, bam, two zero yeah. because they prepped harder, and yeah. then you got to try to fight your way back. I yeah. mean, we've already seen it. Uh, in London this time, mm-hmm. G2 completely, yeah. you know, fumbled against Falcons at first. And Stathew said that had more to do with them not showing up. So they didn't really have to adjust to mm-hmm. Falcons that much. But once you're playing your own A game, you can still adapt to another team, right? Yeah. And that's what yeah. G2 did. They saw how... Uh, Falcons were, were approaching the game, how they were trying to challenge every ball, how they were trying to set up their own goals. Mm-hmm. And as soon as a team like G2, with the quality of G2, figures that out, you're done yeah. for. Yeah, it's You have to bring like, something new. It's almost like one of the hosts of ShiftCast predicted G2 to win, but predicted Falcons to beat them in the Swiss and said, I actually think them losing them in the Swiss would be an advantage. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, so let's move on. I don't remember that either. Uh, go back check the tape <laughs> check the tape all right let's move in to the off season roundup we're going to start doing this on everyone you know shift we are the off season hub for rocket league esports so we're just going to check in give our thoughts about some of the bigger moments first one we want to talk about 
This is something that happened a while back. We just didn't get to it. Mist has been uh, released, benched. Will not be playing with the main energy roster going forward. Boys, what do we think? What do we think the uh, the outlook's like for for both energy and for Mist? I mean, NRG the org, <laughs> like the team. Sorry, yeah, the team. Garrett and Aqua are still okay. on the on the main roster. Um, what is there to say about NRG in the year of our Lord twenty twenty four? It's not the team it once was. That's for it's sure. Not. You guys ever seen that meme where it's like he thought he the part the party ended an hour ago and he's still there and it's that <laughs> dude like dancing. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I feel about NRG. And t- listen, I respect that it seems like they're finally committing to rebuilding around youth, right? They stuck with Aqua, who's you know always had a lot of potential. It seems hasn't been able to put it together. Now they're letting go their best player. Assumingly, they'll pick up another young player. I if yeah. they go and pick up like some mid tier twenty three year old. No offense. Uh, it's 23 year olds in the mid tier. Like it just doesn't make uh, any sense, right? So um, for Mist, it, I think it's great. I think Mist still has a lot to give. I think he can get on a team, an OG level team, I would say, uh, a, a, a SR level team in that lower half of land qualification and make it. But you know, yeah, I mean, Mist should still be. Exactly like you said, Mist should still be at that level. Like getting dropped from energy is not doesn't mean he shouldn't be at a team even better than NRG mm-hmm. uh, was uh, last split or, or last few splits. Um, I'm going to tap the sign nice and early into the segment. <laughs> I'm going to tap the sign that says... Love it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were. That says that roster moves in Rocket League usually don't have anything to do with the gameplay aspect or not from in-game issues, but usually have to do with out-of-the-game experiences, connections, you know, mm-hmm. how they how they play together, the synergy within the team, what they want from the game, what they want from each other, how scrims are, are going, how communication is running, everything that goes on outside of the game. And um, when you see Mist getting dropped, dropped from NRG, that, that doesn't really tell you anything about Mist's potential in the next year. You know, he can cut back in there, grind his way to the top. There there's no doubt about it in my mind. Yeah, the talent's undeniable with him. He's he's he was at the top of NA for how long? Three years, three and a half years. Yeah. Made a major Uh, final. That's yeah. So I mean this best of luck to him. I'm excited. I want to see him on a great team again. I still believe he has a lot to give. Um Another big news across the pond, uh, the KDOP Chaussette experiment continues. It's now been two <laughs> years since they the duo formed with Fairy Peak. Um, and they've gone through three thirds. They've gone through Fairy, uh, sorry, yeah, they stood Fairy, Fairy Peak for Peak. a year. Then they had a Reese Fox for a split and they brought in Astral. Kind of a different like vibe on each one. It was like, first we're going to bring all the old guys together. Then it was like, we're going to try a new guy. And then it's like, best player available. Um, so yeah. Astral's been released. Astral is in a weird spot. I think you at guys this point, agree. I'm not yeah. tapping that sign. I am slamming that sign. <laughs> well, I think you know. Listen, let me let me play devil's advocate. I think if there was ever a time where ever, where Astral and the team he was for was just like, hey guys, I feel like we're going in different directions. Let's mutually part ways. It's this one, right? Um, but he's in a weird spot because everybody knows he's so good. Everybody feels like he's this like still a really, really solid player, but everything else makes nobody want to team with him, it seems like. Um, so what do you guys think? Where where, where, where does he go next? Uh, because really, it feels like a lot of, he's I on really a no-fly list for a lot of orgs. I feel yeah. like you, I mean, it's obviously a very different scenario for him, but I feel like you got to do what a lot of the like older players that kind of end up in a similar situation, you just got to find some young upcoming talent. Right. Some players that just haven't had haven't had the opportunity to land on an org, and there's lots of it in Europe. You know, there's plenty yeah. of it. I think there's a, a slew of of kind of tier two, tier three level pros that have the mechanics and they have the ability. And so if if you know if they can get on a team and work hard and 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 actually game plan and you know figure out a, a strategy that works for the tools that they may have on that team, Astral's still capable of mm-hmm. competing with 
uh, you know, I would say at least top eight in Europe. Yeah. You know where I think you should go? Where? Sa. Because I remember watching Astral dominate Carmine Corp in an upset. They're, all they know how to do is beat Carmine Corp. Let's fuse them together. He's got to start working against other teams at some point, right? Cool. Um, yeah. I, I like think most cards, people so. are wondering what Solary are actually doing. Like from, mm -hmm. from the organization's perspective. Content farming. Because <laughs> yes, they, have, they yeah. have the content creators. They have the dope. Mm -hmm. The dope. But, you know, at, at some point, Solary right now, or actually ever in Rocket League, if you're just a Rocket League fan and you look at Solary, they just seem like a smaller French organization, right? They don't mm -hmm. fit in with the other French teams. They're, they have, you know, the big names, the veterans, but they're not competing for the, the top spots. And that's just a Rocket League perspective, because if you look across the esports landscape, Solary are a very solid French organization with a with a, a, a fan base that doesn't really, you know, that, that can actually compete with the other French fan bases. Yeah. So it, it is a little weird to see them cling to the content creators and not go maybe Astral's way or maybe, you know, some other young talent uh, getting them on the roster and and seeing how they can really reform what they've been doing within Rocket League because uh, who are they getting alongside Josette and, and Kadop? Like, it can't really get much better than what they've done with Ricefox and Astral, I, I'd say. It's at least, if you're if you're one of the better players in EU and you're still looking for a team, right? Are you going to team with them? I don't think so. I, so I think. What are they going to do? I think some players would would think about it just because it would boost their brand and get them on a lot of screens, and that could help them jump their career up. I think that's what Reese Fox thought it was going to do, and it just didn't. Well, yes. He was not and I don't think it was a bad move for him. I'm just saying that at this point, is dropping Astro like just you know saving out on some salary for a salary because are they really going to think they can improve from here i don't see it i don't yeah yeah i don't know i think like the only name i can really come up with french player name i think i was like maybe sizen like is he still kicking yeah but like that's not gonna yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not moving the needle he made one regional he made less regional than solar he did this year so who knows i don't know it's weird you know what's even weirder cloud nine what is kicking mm. zanil mm. This one, this one, this, Jens, you might need to get a new sign because this, the, the sign has been broken on this one. <laughs> this one makes no <laughs> sense too hard. coming on the field, on the field uh, thing because he was phenomenal for them and they, and they were quite good. They made a, a top four and they were, they were one game away from beating G2 and making a yeah. regional final yeah. uh, in that, in that first open qualifier. So um, I don't know if the, I don't think a, a third has been announced. I'm sure you can, if you go look at Star GG or something, you can find it on this, on the Shift Summer League, but I haven't gone and looked. Um, but yeah, what... So Zanil's, I think, an interesting one. I actually think Zanil's going to get quite a bit of... Like, he's going to get a lot of offers and a lot of tryouts. I, I kind of think this might be better for his career. I think he can do better than the teammates he had. No offense to them. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, yeah, I agree, I think. I agree, I think... Um... Cloud9 is a good team. I think it is a team that's like a, it feels like a safe bet. Like you're probably mm -hmm. not going to punch up into the top four. You're probably not going to be consistently trying to make majors, but you probably will be fighting for it consistently. Yeah. Um, but Zanil is just such a unique case because I feel if you rewind back to when he decided to go Dark Zero instead of. Hi, was he part of Pirates on a Boat? I can't remember the other option. I can't remember what it I'm was. Not, I'm not sure. It was, it, it, in, in my opinion, it was a better option. I, I wish I could remember what it was. But he decided to go Dark Zero, which was, I think, Turbo and ZPS Creams. or Creams. It was initially, yeah, I think it was Creams because they dropped J-PAL, I want to say. Right. I'm gonna uh, I wish I could remember. Or maybe exactly they dropped the both. Other... Hold on. I wish I could Research. remember what the other option was. But, but my point is, I, I feel like Zanil has kind of been labeled this upcoming talent, like next up-esque player, but it's been like two and a half years of him sitting right there, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I don't know what to think. I don't know. 
if maybe you know maybe he's a player that is kind of difficult to play around um you know maybe we hit the sign maybe it's something that's like difficult to get along with i have no um, clue in this case i have no clue yeah. either and and i can tell you my my personal experience was anil is wonderful he is so kind and so nice and very easy to talk yeah. to and i've you know seen that with i mean he's been very friendly with other pros as well and i, I think what i gather yeah, there is was that a bit of uh sorry go ahead I just well, I was gonna say what I gather from interactions is that he is seemingly easy to get along with, and I, I think if you look at those replies to to you guys report, yeah, there's lots of people that are confused by it. So yeah, um, yeah, sometimes it feels like the team or the organization or both wanted to make a move, right? And then who? Then it's not very clear who you're actually going to replace. And in this case, it was Sunil. It feels like that was more of of the case here. Also, yeah, Lion Blaze and Percy. Lion Blaze and Percy have have been have a, like a really extensive history together. As a team. oh, do they? Like they played under, they played under M80 together. Um, right. They played under Luminosity together. Uh, so yeah, I mean they're they've always been. And a duo. for your information, they have signed up with Kinsey for uh, the Shift Summer League. So it's so Kinsey. That was their old. That Percy was the M80 team, right? So that they're going the back. To, to Kinsey, hey, which let me, in terms let me ask of... You guys, let me ask you guys this, and, and the same question for Mist as well. Is there a world where these players are requesting to leave? I think in Mist's case, it, I could it, see it if he's happen. maybe not requesting, but he was like, hey guys, I feel like you guys want to go young. I would like to get on a team that is more on the timeline with me. No hard feelings. Like, like I love being here. Mist clearly wanted to play with Garrett at one point in his career. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think there's many other players that have a play style that worked as well for NRG of making main events because there was a lot of teams worse than NRG that that missed main events and Miss specifically, I think, was instrumental in making sure they made every main event. So yeah. he was their best player. I think maybe that. Zanil, all of these players, it's untouched territory for them to start making right. top eights, top fours all the time. Yeah. Well, it, right? I can I can say it wasn't the case for Sunil, and I'm not sure about Mist. It might be. I feel like Mist is in a place after such a career already that he might be the one telling the team that he wants to go somewhere else. But usually, that means you've already got something lined up. All right. Sure. Yeah. So I'm but also, not like, sure if that's he, the case for Mist. It might have been mutual. Like they would have been. Right. Right. Maybe right. NRG was it like, we want to go that young. Happens too. Yeah. Yeah. Mist was like, I don't want to be here, or not. I want to be here, but I want to go try to compete, to contend. <laughs> I'm right. sick of you but, guys. Yeah. And by the way, NRG signed up with Kofer as there. Ah. So they, they have gone young. They've gone. For the gone shift somebody. Oh, so it's you know, what Miss, you know what Miss Garrett G, Aqua, and Kofer. Has Miss signed up with a team yet? Um, I'd have to look. I can't Whatever. see it right now. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what he, where he signs up with because I'm sure he'll compete. Um, but yeah, I mean, was. I, the the Lion Blaze Kinsey Percy thing makes no sense to me because they've tried this roster over and over again, yeah, yeah. and it's never worked at like the, the highest level. They've been like a main event team, and as an org, why why would I pay you money if I know where your ceiling is and well, that's kinda, not where I want to be? It just doesn't make sense. I I agree, it doesn't make sense, and that makes me lean towards like maybe maybe a mutual thing, and the C nine yeah. team is is hopeful for something mm -hmm. different, but couldn't work it out for this first event. Uh, you know, so they just go with with something that they know. Maybe Zanil was hopeful to try something new. I mean, the the reality is obviously we don't know all the context and uh, what's going on behind the scenes and yeah. how much the org had at play or how much the players are, you know, agreeing and wanting to go separate ways or or maybe uh, or maybe like the sign, you know, maybe having issues with with, with with should we get style. a sign? Should we, we should have, actually we should have a graphic make a sign. made? Yeah. We should have a graphic made. That whenever we do this segment, it just like psh, yeah. plops to the front of the screen. We should have Jens like put it on his like. We should get a physical sign and have Jens put it on his. <laughs> he just brings it in. I, I have a yeah. whiteboard probably somewhere. That's okay. funny. That that would yeah. be fantastic. We'll, we'll or, build or one, of those, one of those one of those cards. Um, yeah, that would cards. be really good. Um, but yeah, so that's it for the the sort of notable moves from what I know. There's a few other smaller ones in Mina, um, but. One fourth thing, one little thing before we get into speed taking. New next up list, everybody, going into the off season. Um, I'm going to read off the top ten, if that's cool with you guys. Absolutely. Um, sure. So the t so the only the top ten vote getters are ranked. The rest of them are not ranked. So you might see a graphic. It's 
once after it's 10, there's a few that receive votes. There's a few that the scouts, like, or the people we have working on next up have put on there. But um, the top 10 are the ones that had the 10 most votes. It's not in order after that, just so everyone knows. So the top 10 dominated by North America. That's I'm right. so proud. I mean, I'm it so has happy. been the entire season, yeah. honestly. There's so much young talent in NA that has still to prove yet to prove themselves in in Cling Louisville. to your hope. North American yep. stands. Oh, yeah. I love Absolutely. my speculative American economy. It's not just Keep hope investing anymore, in really. Nvidia stocks. It's I'm sure it'll true, work. true. <laughs> it's not it's just here. hope. They literally won the major. Yeah. Um so number 1, I don't think is, is I think is unsubscri- unsurprising. It's Scribbles from Snowman. I think he's the most hyped prospect uh, in the world right now. Wavy, who honestly is only here because they didn't qualify for the last event. Power move to keep yourself on the thing is intentionally miss the last event so you stay at five and not at that six. Um, Tech Oz is EU's highest ranked player. Obviously, the Carmine Corp demon, uh, number three. Frosty and Reveal come in four and five, respectively. Uh, Scribbles his teammates on the Snowmen, who, to Hootie's, uh, to Hootie's delight, have this apparently started to stick together. They'll be playing in the, uh, in the qualifier together. Um, Eugen, who I remember made uh, top 16 with Yukio, I think. Um, is number six. Kofir, uh, who we just said is going to be playing with NRG at number seven. Um, Tempo from EU. And then uh, we finished off with a pair of Team Rock players, or I think they've they've been released. So, But ex-Team Rock players, uh, Ops, and Dr. Known. And then right off it, we have other players receiving votes are Triton, Emil Vald, Hazo, Daunt, Gom, G-Man, Nush, Reese Fox, Charlie B, Skippy, Nico, Goat, Test show the uh, 14-year-old from SSA. Realize, NA Realize, not the veteran from APAC. Uh, Panda, PNDH, Grandma, and Flaco, whose name sounds like Seiko and is French, so will probably be end up being the best <laughs> on list. There you go. Um, there's also a bunch of other ones you can go look. Uh, fellas, uh, w- let's say we're going into next year. We've eight months or whatever it is, six months, we, we snap our fingers which one of these players do you think is going to be the one that everyone's like the drawly where it's like, man, if he's on a top team now, if he can put things together, like which, which player on here do you think has the best chance? Um, Eugen. I, 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 I like Eugen that. is I like filthy. I'm, I'm actually going to keep going. Tempo is filthy. Emil is filthy. Mozzarella. Watch him. Grandma. Watch him. Uh, like these are a lot of players that I've been seeing play twos. I've been uh, fortunate enough to uh, have them feature them one v ones on the stream. They are absolutely filthy. And and here's the thing that I think is most encouraging. It's funny because I I see Twitter pulled up on the side and Jane Apps is actually talking uh talking up his his friend Talk. I don't know if Talk has made the list yet. A fellow I Nova he's Scotian. On here. He's, he's, on, he's on there. Yeah. But but yeah, one on of my here. favorite things about these players that arrive on this next up list is when you have current or you know long time pros that are like hey this kid is the truth hmm. he's next up you need to be paying attention i love when we see that the the older the older generation kind of showing love to the new ones and i see that all over the place for players like eugen mozzarella um of yeah, course those NA is... players that we've talked about and and watch them play the snowman squad yeah. kofer hmm. i think is another one um lots of exciting exciting talent on the come up in the rock absolutely space. the quality in EU is so there, Unreal. but the quantity in NA is staggering. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've got. It some... feels like we're on the the verge of an avalanche. That's not a snowman pun. <laughs> we've got talk from Canada. We've got uh, also four um, American like US players who have not had any uh, top sixteen experience yet. Um, made it on the list though. That's Martin, I guess you pronounce it, MRTN, Pigeon, Scythe, and Fast. All very young, mm, very uh, young. Quite, quite talented. We still have to see, you know, what kind of quality we have there. But they, they're on the, on the next up, top 15, top 50 at least. And, you know, I am so happy. We started talking about this on Shiftcast at the start of the season, about how North America looked defeated, looked beaten by EU, and it was just over for them. But it is <laughs> so not over. We're so barack. It's crazy to see how many uh, North American players have come up throughout this year and how the entire region has really proven themselves 
again, you know, because it, it feels like they've always been there, but they needed to prove themselves yeah, they again, to prove and they it. did. Yeah. yeah, it feels like the the we're it feels like we're entering uh, an almost. I, I said this in the last episode when you guys here. It feels like almost reverse RLCS X, where mm. now it's NA that has the team that is just beaten down yeah. on everybody and yeah. just looks unde- unbeatable when they're on. And it's it's raising the collective level because the best right. team is in that region. So they you have so to important. get to that level, right? Yeah. Um, and then on Europe, you have a bunch of teams that are really good that could beat them, that could win. And that feels a lot like back when you had Envy and G2 and NRG and SSG. And now we have the four French teams. They're better right. than those teams were, I think. But um, yeah, you, I think that's a big part of it is you needed... You know, you needed a mode, so to speak, oh. to set the tempo for <laughs> NA, um, and uh, and and get these young players. I'm just gonna say quickly, to me, just because he's further along in his development and has a reputation, I think Wavy's got the best chance to get picked up by two top players um, as sort of like the, yeah. the, the next chronic, it, it, so to speak. Like I could see him ending up on OG. I could see any, him ending up with like two piece and Justin. Um, and so I think that he's gonna be the one that is most likely to be put in a position to be that next sort of like drawly chronic sphinx type player. So I'm going to say uh, wavy, but it's not that I think he's like the most talented. I think you're right about Eugen. It just feels like in Europe, the top French players are all like, we're just going to shuffle each other around. Yeah. There's only one or two players that came into those top four teams uh, and they exchanged. Uh, who's the one player that left? I guess a chronic for one of them. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I, got wavy. I, I, I think Wavy is a really good shout, not just because he's proving himself on the field right now, but I'm gonna tap the sign again. But just this t- this yeah. time, not before because the player has been dropped, but because Wavy has a good chance to make it on on a top team. I'm not not saying uh, TSM is, is a bad team, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, he Where... he seems like he wants to work. He wants to learn. Right. And he seems right. nice to be around, which like is he... apparently impossible for Rocket League players. <laughs> fucking one in a million. Excuse my language. Um, but you know, yeah. you need some mentality that can work oh, with yeah. a lot of other players, and he has that. On the other hand, you have someone like Scribbles who is just incredibly young. Mm. So even though it's very hard to say right now where he'll end up, he has so much time to grow into uh, a Rocket League player that everyone wants to team with, that everyone wants to reach the top with. That I, I st- still have. I would I would say Scribbles for me. Is is the pick for player who can actually really make it? Maybe not as soon as someone like Wavy, but mm. maybe he can go even further because he's already where he is right now. It's at the at fourteen years old, which is incredible. Yeah, totally. I don't know what you guys are doing. Are y'all not picking French players? <laughs> the evidence is there, folks. I got. We got. We got people. <laughs> apparently, I, there's whispers. There's whispers that 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 France might fall soon. So I, I'm I'm sticking with America. I mean, the, the top top ten is ranked, and there's only one French player in the top ten. Well, uh, I we, I was talking about this earlier today. Listen, I'm not going to disrespect the French. I'm not disrespecting the French. I will wait to see if we have another year where like six once in a generation players come up at the same yeah, time yeah. from France. That's crazy, dude. Because that yeah. might have been a one time thing. And that's fine. And they're going to run the league for the next four years, five years. But <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen every year. Okay. Well, they can Lucky have Eugene. Lucky Eugene Lucky can be there for Seiko. two years. He's passed yeah. it off. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, like Seiko kind of came in as his own as a French player because yeah. uh, Zen and Vatir and all them. So, so he. Maybe Eugene's like next year's Seiko, where there's like yeah. an avalanche after him. We all start to. You know who we are underrating? Who? Still exotic. Yeah. Exotic. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's still he's chronically he's nowhere near done. In, well, yeah, in, uh, but French he's, he, I mean, he's gonna win the world championship next year with Zen, so it's, it's whatever. There you um, go. Anyway, on let's move on to speed taking. Um, <laughs> let's move on to speed taking. Let's finish this off. Who wants a question first? I'm like, Oprah. bring it to me. Come on. All right, Hootie. Yep. Um, RLCS 2025 needs a new format. That's what Koozie said. How do you feel? Yes, but small tweaks. Right. I mm. So I definitely understand the concern about the shortened season and rolling into just an extremely long offseason relative to what we're used to. I definitely understand that. I think those are valid concerns. But the problem is... Until you make that space, tournament organizers can't. They can't mm-hmm. make something, right? Like, that, you mm-hmm. have to, to build it, and they will come kind of thing, right? Like, you have to provide the space for tournaments to exist. 
and then tournament organizers will make things happen. And obviously, we're going to have community um, community organizations, shift, tactical banditry, et cetera. And then you have like Johnny Fear, Rizzo, James. You know, there are going to be people that run things online, but I'm not talking about that. I think we will see large off-season tournaments. We saw the FIFA thing that was um, announced, which is like a country-based uh, event, and I assume that has to be a LAN, right? Yeah, but just not been announced where or when yet. Right. And then we have, of course, EWC, which is the uh, former Gamers 8 event. Um, but I think in the future, we will see an E-League. We will see a DreamHack. We will see a, a Wii Play. We will see something else, maybe multiple tournaments, uh, fill up some of this downtime in the off-season. So if you are concerned about it, that is a fair concern. But I think we will see, we'll see some stuff fill the gap, fill the void there. The small tweaks that I want to make is to uh, qualification to do a little bit better job of consistently finding the top 16. I don't mind the three events into a major, three events into a major world championship. I don't mind that. But I think while it's exciting to see a lot of new faces in a regional, unfortunately, I do think that we didn't have the top, we didn't have the best competition that we could and or should have. Um, and and look, that's okay. But I think if you're making a, a premier circuit where you the whole idea is to field the top 16 teams, the actual best in the world, and have them compete against one another, I think you could build a format that will more consistently yield the absolute best 16. This this format was just a little bit shaky here and there, and and I don't think it's big. I don't think it's big adjustments. You know, I think a, a, a suggestion that I think would be fairly simple is to feed 32 teams into Sunday and then run two big Swiss brackets. Yeah, totally. that's going to that's going to field eight from each and then you have your top 16 right there. So that so, I think would do a better job than than our final day double Elan bracket that we saw. So would you say it's even a new format at that point or just an improved I, format? Yeah, maybe maybe not a new format but some adjustments to quals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we've been, right. we've been preaching that all year, right? We, yeah, yeah, we're what, definitely what, not what the a speedy only take here. as well by the way. Yeah, oh, I went all the way around to there. <laughs> Michael, I'm going to throw Stop. it to you. From GC, who got autocorrected to Greece in our sheet. Very nice. <laughs> Sorry um, about that, Greece. GC. Power finally make top eight yes. at the World yes. Championship. Yes, oh, they're going top eight. I made a bracket the other day. It was the best bracket ever. Power top eight, no EU top four. It's oh. happening. Um, and oh, I will be so excited to see it. No, I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. And you know what? If there's one thing I can really take away from this season, I'm like, I'm an OCE head. I love OCE. I want to see OCE succeed. I like OCE. It's too bad that there seems to be a lot of p uh, players that seem like they have horrible uh, political views over there. But you know what? <laughs> Look, I'm looking through that because it's just so much fun. Nobody's really trying half the time. They're just up. They're hanging out. They play all offense. OC <laughs> is an absolute wonder. It's the most underrated region in the game to watch. And I want to see the Kings of OC. I think the Kings of OC, they can do it. They're just going to put it together for one series and keep making it to that round five. That's right. Um, and I think with the extended uh, break before Worlds, it's going to be a lot more variance in the Swiss. We're not going to see teams in a rhythm like they usually are. So if they can come out strong, get another big round one win, I think they might see a team that's less good that comes down from the 2-1 round that just had a hot start. Um, I think they're going to do it. I don't know if they'll go past that, but I'm all in on OCE. I'm just all in on OCE. I might start my own OCE podcast. Just me talking about OCE every week. Let's do it. Not even Rocket League. Just like, I love OCE. I'm just naming things <laughs> I like about Australia. Um, Hoodie. Yeah. Wait, I just asked Yens. you a question. Wow, brutal. Yeah. Um, Jens. Uh, 2016, because you're a historical guy, you know, 2016 to 2018 was the best era of Rocket League esports. This one's from Crazy? Craze? Cries. Cries. Yeah. From the, <laughs> the Cries <laughs> corner, do. <laughs> if, if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, no, it, it was an incredible time to follow Rocket League. I've been following Rocket League since 2016. I discovered the game in. March or May of 2016, and almost instantly got into the esports. I mean, we've talked about it with Cloudfuel. Go back and watch that interview because it's it was such an exciting time for the game. But I mean, looking back at it, you can still understand why that was so good to watch. But since then, 
we've grown in so many ways. It's not just the gameplay that's gotten faster and better and more mechanical and more strategic. There's just so much in terms of events that were going on in 2019 with with all the all the Rocket League that was being played. Um, I mean, we we've had some wacky errors too with the grid every week. Oh, that, was that was crazy brutal, to follow. Dude. That was actually I mean, at that brutal. point. I wasn't with Shift. I was uh, writing freelance for an outlet called VG Recon, mm-hmm. um, and I was doing the NA power rankings every week. But sometimes there was a uh, like once every two weeks there was no like proper RLCS on the weekend for for NA. So I just had to judge them off of the grid matches, which <laughs> the players did not care about. Yeah, they did not care about that. So Scrap. they were just they were just playing for the fun of it, and I had to rank those teams. Crazy times, crazy fun times. But since then, we've seen so many great LAN events, so many great players pop up. I mean, if you go back to 2016, 2018, nobody has heard of Mon- Monkey Moon, nobody mm-hmm. heard of Daniel. I mean, you're missing out on so many good players, so many good moments. That no, no, that that wasn't the golden era it wasn't the best era of rock league it was a great era but i'd still it's still up from here i feel like getting better if there's gonna be a golden era i don't think there is one because i think we're just too young i think it's gonna be a larger than just a couple year period i think i would probably just say 2019 because there's so many lands like if you're gonna pick one year one year time period to say like that was the golden era of our esports that's the one where there was like a land every two weeks. Yeah, well, what you had in those days, 2016, 2018, is that there were so few games mm-hmm. in and RLCS, right? Because it's all league play and they mm-hmm. were they were limited in terms of mm-hmm. teams, in terms of game days, that every game was really important. But when the open era started, within a month or two, the new players that came in had already overtaken the veterans yeah. in terms mm-hmm. of how many games they were playing because that's how quick it went but back in those days it was easier because of how few games were being played to actually have a dynasty mm-hmm. so in terms of dynasties and following a team just beat everyone like dignitas did mm-hmm. that's incredible maybe impossible maybe it's actually impossible now yeah I mean, the closest so, we'll probably see is Vitality. Uh, yes. After they got sent. Yeah, Vitality did basically. Well, they they almost did more in a single split than mm. Dignitas did over three seasons, which is crazy, yeah. but it's true. It's but and 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 who knows? Maybe the next year will just be G two winning it all. But I don't see it happening. I think it's basically impossible for a team to be that dominant because of how many games are they're played. So it's a difference. It, it, just totally different era and it's it wasn't the best it was great but not the best and this guy talked about my speed take i know i I knew i knew jens was gonna love getting in his old old man bag (laughs) you did you called it yeah it's funny i mean the lands attending those lands was special too because they were a lot smaller but looking back at at the first land i went to was in amsterdam in, in 2018 and there were 2,000 people there in the Amsterdam theater. I knew barely anyone. I knew like five people back in, back in those days. But now if you talk to other people in, who are still you know, active in the scene, you're proper diehard fans, they were all also there. And I was like, you were there too? No way. <laughs> totally didn't see each other or didn't yeah. know about each other. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy how, how times have changed. All right. Who do you want to question? Let me hear it. Sorry. Let's talk about casting. As you are a caster yourself, RLCS should bring back three-person casting. As you guys remember, we used to have like some of the finals would have three people casting. The Legendary Fury of Moist series did. Uh, What do you think? This is from Jamari, by the way. Hmm. It's a long thought. It is. There's a few different things. I mean, I'm thinking about one, like at LAN, it could be helpful to like save voice, right? Like you you split the load a little bit more. And I, I think at LAN, it's important to stay fresh because you need to be ready for the big moment whenever it hits. But 
I also feel like we've trimmed the team down. So doing three people per cast, maybe, you know, maybe those kind of nullify. But as far as a preference, I I don't, to be honest, I don't really remember the, the, the TriCast as like a standout thing, you know? So I, I would guess based off of that, that, that I don't think we really need it, you know? I think if it was something that was ingrained in my memory as like a special, wow, this is incredible. Then maybe I, maybe I would say yes, but I think, uh, yeah. you know, I think what we've got now is fine. Yeah. I remember it, but it, it doesn't stand out to me as something we should bring back because sure. it, it, it's just not really the game for it. It right. Rocket League is the kind of fast paced gameplay that you want to, that you can cover with two people. Um, but you also have enough. You also need to have enough downtime that you don't really need three people yeah. to to go over everything. There's not like in a game like League of Legends, you have it very often, and then you have one caster who's really the play by play caster, like yeah. really going hard, just play by play. That's all he does, and, the entire cast. And, and then you have someone. Those are in. how long of the matches? Yeah, the matches are like thirty to fifty right. minutes. It's very um, different. And then you have someone t kind of taking over when. It's going a little bit slower, just talking mm -hmm. about the game, and then another one who is purely color casting, basically, yeah. right? That's kind of how how it turns out. But in Rocket League, it's just a completely different dynamic, so I don't really see yeah. that working out. And also, you have to do it online, by the way, because have to, yeah, three online. people online is no. impossible to coordinate. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it's, it it was cool. I just remember that. I remember one match basically that it was really good and that was the one where they did Fury of Moist because they had uh Chimaco. what's his name yeah. yes and Chimaco. and so that kind of gave it more of a an international flair right but other than that I don't remember any of them so all right who needs one who um, needs one I can throw one to one. you uh, uh yeah we need there's one on here that needs to go to Michael okay oh, well I say I feel like both ahead, you could then. say are 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 kind of in my in my domain so it's just well this is from reese and he says first killer is no longer a top three player in north america definitely one of the takes of all time <laughs> <laughs> so hold on um hold on before you answer who's number one mode okay oh he's the best player in the world yeah yeah yeah. that's right that's fair number two oh well, jesus Mm -hmm. he I think he showed it. And then number three is Jason. Jason's number three. <laughs> okay, okay, defend that. Did you guys not watch the... Did you get, I know uh -huh. you were watching Oxygen. I mean, you got a good look at Jason in that match okay, against buddy. him. And he was... Listen, he wasn't playing against no bums. He was playing against Oski and Joyo. And he looked clear. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't get They don't get to that. They, first of all, they don't play G2 as well without him playing that. He was... That was the best for you to say that. Mr. Reese, after clearly the best performance of the season for him, where he was clearly a top 10, <laughs> top eight player at the event, clearly the best, the third best North American player, because let's be honest, Daniel and Atomic didn't really wake up until that final. That semifinal against Furia, there was like three or four moments where, where Mo just took the ball and went like, all right, let's go, and just went and, and scored, or made, made a play and made it easy, okay? And and for me, watching Gen G. It was like it was like phase levels of the Jason show. So, uh, yeah, he's still clearly top three in North America. Still the second highest producing player statistically this season. Uh, you know, uh, we're doing this weird flirting versus harassment thing with BDS and Gen G, where they won the same amount of regionals and have the same placements on LAN. And one of them, it's like, oh, are they a sneaky dark horse? Oh, Jirali's so good. And first killer, it's like, <laughs> oh, first killer sucks now. Oh my god, they can't make top four. So uh, I don't know why we're doing that. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's still that guy. I don't know why you're thinking you have to defend yourself. I agree. I wasn't he's talking to you. I was talking to Reese. Yeah. Reese is out of his damn mind. I'll tell you that. He's, he's, he is absolutely... I, he has crossed the line. I can't lie. I, I don't know if I would the, put LJ over it. Yeah, the I, LJ I think top it, three, I think, really made yeah, this... Yeah, I think that's it's a two, two sell players. Because now, now you're saying Daniel's not top three, and I don't think... Yeah, he's right. not. Agree he's with not that. He's not top three, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, Daniel Daniel is is amazing. <laughs> And he's he's not first killer. He's never been first killer. Like, Hoodie, I didn't I know, know we had Dazarin on the podcast. Dude, no, Michael, you oh, have now you I'm have, now I'm a, now I'm Dazarin for putting first killer third in North America. Gen G, chill. 
You have a magical yeah. ability to say something that is fairly defendable, but throw in something that's just is out of left field and <laughs> makes correct. no sense I'm that correct. you're gonna like like eighty percent of the people that would be like, yeah, Michael's right. You're gonna they're gonna hear that one point and be like, whoa, what? <laughs> that is way literally. Off. Listen, this is, by the way, this is Mo? literally why John, aka, always gets downvoted on Reddit all the time because he does this literally all the time. <laughs> well, you know what? I like John, aka, always because I think he stands on business just like I do. Beast mode, uh, LJ, first killer, Daniel, atomic. That's your top five in North America. Jack mm -hmm. sixth. That, that, that's it. That's that's it. Like, I'm sorry. You can cry. You can cope. You can seethe. <laughs> You're not going to be right. This is that's just how it is. I am the authority on this. Anyway, yeah, yeah. finish it off with the ends. There we go. Uh, who said this? I know what the take is, but who said it? Steve. G2 Steve. Steve. Um, Steve says that KC and G2 would be the best final from a narrative slash story perspective. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I have to agree with that because... It would be the comeback of the ages for Carmen Corum. I don't think Wait, the fans. Why? Sorry. Why they would lose? Well, they would lose in the grand final. I mean, I'm making it to the grand final. I'm right? I was just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joshing. With yeah, you. I'm just yeah, joshing yeah. With you. Well, I don't even think the Carmen Corum fans believe in their team anymore. Whoa, like not like. Of course, they're still going to support them. And they're still going to throw out the copium that if Carmen Corp would have been in London, you know, G G2 wouldn't have such an easy run. It's true. And, Just and like G how if Shopify Rebellion was there, Falcons would have went top. G2 went top not two. beating any European teams. I mean... Uh... They, they didn't beat any SSA teams either. You know, so fraud regions don't get to play yeah, the best teams in the yeah, world. Yes, yeah. I, I, well, I fear. Well, well, um, we can yeah. make all the wrongs right, though with a KCG2 Grand Finals in uh, Dallas. So, yeah, I have to agree. That would be the game because Gentlemates have kind of thrown out their narratives after after uh, London. I mean, they're just not the top team. They, they never really were, but there was still this thought of they are such a good LAN team. If they can repeat in London, and they almost did, they looked incredible. But then they just faltered a little bit. I feel like Carmen Corp needs to come back with more than a vengeance. And if I want to see them beat G2, I want to see it happen in the grand finals. So Steve, Steve's got it there. I really want to see KC, G2, KC, and G2 Gentlemates, just because if G2 beats them both, and I'm not saying they will, because those are great teams, but if they beat them both, then they will have beaten all the teams that were considered in like the elite tier. They've beaten then Furia, the Gen.G, Vitality, BDS right now. Uh, and what was the other team they've beaten? There's like eight oh, teams. Sorry? There's eight teams that we, we, we consider to be like the top of the Gen G, G2. Oh yeah, they've beaten Falcons. So they've beaten Falcons, Falcons yes. Vitality, BDS, Furia, and Gen.G. If they get those last two and they can say they beat every other top contender this year and they won two lands and they beat Falcons. It's like, you know, we're talking about all-time great roster at that point. Yeah, yeah, that that would be something special. And then I'll I'll get another sign and I'll hold it up, and and it will say NA is better than EU. Whoa! I don't want it to say that though. I wanted to say only four different letters, M, O, D, E. Where is if it? If they sweep, if they sweep the grand finals, I will. What that? is it? Oh my God! It says mode. If G2, if G2 or Gen G clear the grand finals 4-0, okay. I'll hold up that sign. All right, I'm going to make you one it, too. Make it a reaction post. If Gen G win Worlds, I'm buying all three of us a jersey and we have to wear it for the entire offseason. <laughs> oh my God. For the no, what? just one episode. Just one episode. Okay. One episode, you guys, you have to wear, I'll <laughs> buy you, I will buy and ship you Gen G jerseys. And you have to wear them with me if Gen G win Worlds. All right, I'm down. Awesome. All right. Um, un un underrated thing about the major before we leave. Uh, speaking of things that we kind of promise, I was watching a little bit of Roll Dizzy stream, and he kept he was so out on G two. He kept being like, "Guys, if G two win, I'll shake my ass on camera." <laughs> and so when they won, this whole chat's like, "Oil up, unk!" Like all this stuff. <laughs> 
And so he took his camera and put it to like the smallest, like the literal like pixels, barely pixels. And the whole time I was like reported, reported for a scam, reported for a scam. <laughs> you got you, you that this is ridiculous. That was great. So that's a real that yeah, awesome. I'm done after that. Let me let me yeah. ask you guys one question. This popped up um on my stream when I got home. Do you think the vitality split, you know, near perfection, uh, or G two season, only top twos. What is more impressive? G two vitality. <laughs> it's it's longer. It's just longer. Like it's you. You have to do it for longer. Vitality. Like, look at what happened but to Carmen. To win, <laughs> they did win. They had the Not same amount of wins. In that one split, as the thing did. To me, I look at what happened with Carmen Corp as a evidence that what G2 did is tougher. Because Carmen Corp almost hit what Vitality did and then didn't have it hit another final. And G2, that consistency is hard. We can complain about they didn't play this team, they didn't play that team. You get, They are the poster child for the entire season of people complaining that, oh, just beat who you have to beat isn't fair. They were literally just beating who they had to beat the whole time, except for Genji Mobile and Racing, of course. But most of the teams that they played, they just beat them. But that's the they, thing. You have, if you want to be the most impressive feat, it's going to be Vitality. You got to win. Just winning, not just getting there. They did winning. win. They won five times. Yeah, but not every time in a row. Vitality okay, they, didn't drop a single thing in that entire split. Regional, I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that regional, wasn't unbelievable. Major world championship. Yeah. Okay, but row. you didn't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He said the Vitality split. He did not say the world championship. If you include well, the world that, championship, I mean, that, yeah, the okay. world championship. Then yes, I agree it's Vitality. There. Now, yeah, I, I, okay, look. I'm, when you I'm said split, I got stuck on just the major. I'm on the Vitality side as well. Okay, then I think Because we're I think the winning is... Ultimately, people don't care about second place. They don't care about it. Eh. A, year, a year later, people don't care about it. Seems like people care a lot when it's uh, and, and people be like, okay, great, that's fine. First when NA when it, when NA wins, it seems like people care a lot about second place all of a sudden because actually they were better. <laughs> actually, third third fourth were actually better. Actually, and if they had played the winner, the real they finals were in a quarter. Yeah. What I'm gonna say is this: if G two goes to win worlds, yeah, and 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 honestly, yeah, maybe even just course. maybe even just goes top two at worlds, no. I yeah, might take no. I might take mm. I might take a full season, bro, a mm. full season, and you never. Including yeah. both majors, you never go under second place. That is crazy. Yeah, that you just said no one cares about second place. What do you yeah, mean? I, yeah, I do, I do, and that is that is fairly contradictory. I agree, but a full season of only grand finals, grand is, finals, it's, it's just insane. I think yeah. I would say, um, I think they'd have to win it to be better. And yeah, yeah. I, I got stuck on the split part of it where sure, I thought you sure. just meant yeah. win three regionals, win a major versus win yeah. four regionals, the, three, two finals, and then right. thing. But yeah, the world championship is the world championship. Like you can win majors, but if you want your name to be up on well, Chance you, Field, you got to win the big one. In the comments below too, what you think. Do you, yeah, totally. would you, would you prefer a season of top two with a major win? You know, what is it? Three regional wins, four regional mm -hmm. wins? Um, or would you prefer the absurd run? From Vitality yeah. just winning every reason. I, I also think I also think Vitality alone is one thing, and then Zen added to that is like that's just yeah. crazy, man. Like, yeah, just, just straight out of the gates. Yeah, like right out of the gate. You all like you think about that one v one run he had too, where he mm. just took on like 10, 11 of the top twenty players in the world, just destroying yeah. everyone. To that think was just such that, a fun time. To think that 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 Vitality core really missed the regional it back when it was like impossible to miss a regional is is insane Missed a regional um, missed the first major what well, they were top yeah. eight in the second major right yeah they went on top eight to liquid uh, in a really close series they were they, they had figured it out by then but then um you know you add you add zen and things change and then g2 has a great story too where it was like you know na formed like a phoenix in the ashes with this like bio weapon of a of a team and and they and they worked their tail off to get back on par and then eventually above Europe or the top of Europe at least. But you know um, who Zen got stopped by in that 1v1 run? Ruas. Ruas. We have yeah. not talked enough about Ruas and Amina boys this episode. We will change that next episode because we'll have uh, the coach from R8 Beastbound. Mm -hmm. Nice segue, Jens. 
There we go. Great stuff. Yeah, I can't Beautiful wait to talk Mina. Because just um, how Mina has performed and how they have grown as a region is such an interesting story that we should dive more into. And we will. Totally. We definitely will. You don't want to miss it. So make sure you uh, click that subscribe button. Stay tuned on the channel or follow there on Spotify, wherever you are listening or watching. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of ShiftCast. We'll catch you next time.